time, Stephen Hayne, declared her death a homicide caused by cocaine toxicity. In early 2007, a Lowndes County grand jury indicted Gibbs, a 16-year-old black teen, for depraved heart murder, defined under Mississippi law as an act eminently dangerous to others regardless of human life. Seven years and much legal wrangling later, Gibbs could finally go on trial. She could become the first woman ever convicted by a Mississippi jury for the loss of her pregnancy. The case intersects a number of divisive and difficult issues. The criminal justice system's often disproportionate treatment of poor people of color, especially in drug prosecutions, the backlash of Roe v. Wade, and the conservative push to establish personhood for fetuses as part of a broad-based strategy to weaken abortion laws. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. Fans are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the fans program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's fans.fppradio.com. On Tuesday, the ACLU asked the U.S. Department of Justice to reconsider its decision not to prosecute six Michigan police officers who fatally shot a homeless man during a confrontation over stolen coffee. The Saginaw police officers fired 47 rounds at Milton Hall, a mentally ill man armed with a knife, and struck him 11 times in a July 2012 confrontation over a stolen cup of coffee. Federal authorities announced on February 25th that they had not found enough evidence of willful misconduct to ask for charges against the officers, but ACLU officials said cell phone video of the incident recorded by witnesses showed the officers fired the fusillade within a matter of seconds and continued shooting even after Hall fell to the ground. Mark Fancher, the racial justice staff attorney for the ACLU of Michigan, said, As a civilian, Mr. Hall had every right to expect that the police would protect his life, but instead he was the target of what resembled in many ways a firing squad. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Dick Cheney Vice Presidential Library opens in a pitch-dark, sulfurous underground cave. And a seedless watermelon is coming to grips with the fact it'll never be able to have kids. This is the Onion Week in Review. Following a litany of tragedies occurring over the past year, a report this week from scientists at Princeton University confirmed that 90% of the Earth's atmosphere is now made up of thoughts and prayers. Researchers confirmed that with the rise of tragic events occurring all across the world each and every day, the Earth's atmosphere is 7% nitrogen, 3% oxygen, and 90 percent emotional pleas begging for everything to be okay. In other news, a new study finds nothing that will actually convince you to change your lifestyle, so just forget it. UMass Dartmouth is beginning to regret offering a course in applied domestic terrorism, and a sparrow thinks it might have caught the bird flu after puking seeds all morning. Stay tuned after the video for a brief tear in the fabric of space-time, offering a glimpse at next week's Onion Review. And keep checking theonion.com for more. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-453. You can give us a call and talk about whatever is on your mind. Free Talk Live is live. I mean, you know, why else would we call it Free Talk Live if it wasn't? Ian is away uh, trolling bureaucrats at like a city council meeting or something like that. No, they're politicians, they're not bureaucrats. Bureaucrats are, they're, they're not elected. So, um, yeah, he's he's off to mess with them so it's mark with you and marcus and uh, you know before the show i had all planned what i was going to do marcus yes but then you, you brought in a story and it's changed everything for me <laughs> it's um it's a story about 
a, the, a, a woman's perspective, uh, not a perspective, yeah. but a, a an article on the history of marriage, and yeah. I guess by a female author? Yeah, so the, the title of it is Not the Marrying Kind, A Modern Girl's Guide to Sex and Love. But that, it gets into, you know, a lot of history about that and how it relates to modern day. I think it relates to men um, just as much because yes. generally women marry men. Generally, not every time, <laughs> um, especially historically. <laughs> so you can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or you can contact us on uh, Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. If you send us a user request, we'll take care of it right during the show. We'll we'll accept it right during the show, and then you can give us a call. Frankly, the audio sounds better. If you've done it in the past, of course, you know the, the routine, but it sounds good. So it's lrn.fm on Skype or 855-450-FREE. Okay, so I'm going to just jump into this story, and I'm going to jump ahead right down into it to the meat of the story. And uh, she writes, uh, let's start with the history, the idea that our Mr. or Mrs. Wright will fulfill us emotionally, sexually, spiritually, and everything else is new, 200 years new. Uh, compared with hundreds of thousands of years of civilization, modern love marriage looks like a social experiment. Before the end of the 19th century, trying tying the knot was done for inheritance, building important family ties, and securing business connections. Now, I wonder about this um, because we most of the history that exists is the history of the wealthy. That's right. And we don't have the history of the poor because poor didn't necess- they didn't even necessarily need to read and write very well. Well, the, the, the next uh, couple sentences here do say, and not only within the noble classes. Okay. Even agricultural workers would be paired off according to the strategic location of their in-laws' fields. So this, I guess, is really kind of talking about, you know, the noble class and then maybe the... Is that would that be the middle class of the agrarian class? The, yeah. um, you know, the merchant class and the agrarian class certainly. The landowners, um, you know, th- those pe- would be the people beneath them. A right. Bit. Yes. So I guess you know to some extent it's not just the uh, the nobles, right? I still would say that um, of uh, in a given area, those people would comprise fewer than fifty percent of the population. Uh, so the, you've got this bottom fifty percent that would marry for whatever reason they would marry, and I think that I, I think people make sort of you know, practical considerations when they marry let's hope they do if they're not making practical considerations they're likely to end poorly i I mean i would hope that most people make practical decisions when when finding a a partner especially if that's a partner is to start a family with in order in order to have children with right whether you're adopting or having them naturally or whatever i would hope that uh adults you know make practical decisions i think that practical decisions in finding a partner is important and, and I even read something that somebody had posted a while ago, and I thought it made a lot of sense because I've always enjoyed the idea of, ah, love and finding the one love, and, and I'm a romantic kind of guy in many ways. But, you know, I read this thing. It was about, it was like supposedly like a father talking to his son uh, about getting married, and the son was very uh, worked up. He was not worked up. He was nervous, very nervous, like, oh, you know, because he has all these reservations. What if this? What if that? And uh, the father said, look, you're getting married not for you to be with her. It's not for you. You're getting married for the children that you're going to have together. You're getting married to give those children, you know, a good home that you can provide together with, you know, with your future wife. And maybe that sounds a little wrong to some people or, or misguided, but I think it makes a lot of sense, right? Like if you're choosing the right partner to start a family with, you know, the whole idea of really like, even if you're not getting married, but just connecting with them and staying together with them, it's to the benefit of the children if if you do it well, right? If you're doing it well together. Um, I would say that, you know, certainly for me, the having children deepen the commitment like this was this is the full-on commitment I've, we're going to full Monty at this point. <laughs> sure. Um, having a child. We didn't have children. We had a child. Um whereas i'm sure some people will say you know the you married people talking about whatever that you know that the, somehow the commitment is uh, as great for 
you know, them. I I tend to think that having children deepens a commitment for um, you know it it brings on the full realization of the commitment that one has made um, for everybody. Well, uh, right, because now it's not just you and her, right? It, once you can leave any time. I mean, I've I owned a house with a woman I wasn't married to. We, you know what a quit claim deed is? Doesn't take much to file one of those things. I've been through, you know, helped with uh, divorces where, um, with you know, couples that had been married for a relatively short period of time, didn't have a lot of property, um, didn't have children. Those aren't very big pieces of paperwork. Yeah, you know, right. when the kids get involved, when the, you know, I mean, I suppose when a couple's been together for, say, 20 years and built a life together, but usually it's the it's the younger people that don't have the kids and they don't have the assets either. Sure. I mean, now I, I, my parents got divorced uh, when I was fairly young and uh, I was fine with that. But I had some very close friends I grew up with whose parents were really happy together. I mean, uh, uh, some of my best friends uh, had parents that were very happy together. And that was really fun for me to see that, you know, in action. Uh, and still to, to this day, they're they're together. Um but it was to you know to the benefit of the uh, to of the kids right because they had a strong union and a, and they had a strong happy good family so and I I think that's that's a nice thing to have and not that you know I I had a great family as well but that was that they just didn't live in the same house right <laughs> <laughs> um, so back to this article uh, of course people still fell in love but uh, that was nothing to do with marriage. Uh, among the aristocracy of the Middle Ages, the highest form of love was considered to be extramarital. In the 16th century, the essayist uh, Montagne, I'm probably messing that up, wrote that any man in love with his wife was a man so dull no one else could love him. <laughs> Theologians considered loving one's spouse to be a sin. They called it Id- idolatry because it could interfere with the love of God. Huh. Yeah, so b- behind the seismic cultural change— that has to have yeah. had a, you know, a huge effect on what was then modern culture, right? If the, if the thinkers of the day are saying, look, you're not supposed to be in love with your wife. This is a business partner for an earthly arrangement here. Yeah, exactly. That's what they were saying, right? They're saying, like, look, no, no one's in love with their wife. And if you are, wow, you must be really dull. <laughs> So what are people supposed to do when they are in love? If I mean, they're, they're going to be in love, right? If they're not in love with their wife, who, with whom are they going to be in love, and what are they supposed to do when they are in love? Well, I mean, what this said was that the you know they would have an extramarital affair, and that that person wow. would be their their top love, uh, but that was outside of marriage, you know. Mm. So that that was supposedly how it went. I know that it was relatively common, certain for the certainly for the nobles to do this. But I mean, if you can imagine, if you were married off at seven or eight to the uh, you know to some cousin who's <laughs> half a globe away, right. um, and they come and they stick you together, and you know you two are going to be, you know you're going to be king and queen one day. Eh. You know, and, and oftentimes you have your own bedrooms. You don't see each other even for, you know, a few minutes a day or whatever. It doesn't seem like you're going to be really in love. Right. I, I think that does make a, a certain level of sense for, for those, the noble class, if you will, if it's that kind of thing that you're describing there. Um, so I guess we'll continue this uh, after the break and see what else comes up. Yeah, I've got a couple of calls on that I hadn't uh, didn't have access to earlier, so uh, we'll be getting to those too. You can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. That's 3733 for the word free. Or uh, Skype, LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so 
less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Because we are smothering in spam, please do not reply to all when you can instead reply. I was recently among over a hundred invited to a corporate reunion. It's always a warm affair, and that's the problem. Enthusiasm for our upcoming get-together caused many recipients to RSVP the organizer with a cheery reply to all. I can't wait. Then others piled on with a reply to all to that. Then the, I'm out of my office now, auto responders joined in. So I replied to all, asking that we all reply only to the organizer. Hey, at least I tried. One invitee, apparently retired, shot back, point taken, but I really like seeing the responses since they're so positive. Smiley face. This better be an open bar. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Seven three three. For those of you who don't have letters on your uh, on your phone, it's Mark with you and Marcus. Eight fifty five four fifty free. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about here on the. Well, this is the live Thursday edition of Free Talk Live, and Ian is away at a city council meeting. I guess they're trying to uh, raise parking rates here, and he has a a fascination with parking downtown in Keene. You know, you have to tell the audience where Ian is if he's not here because immediately people are going to worry, did he get arrested? I can't <laughs> promise that that won't happen by the end of the night, Marcus. I <laughs> I, I ha- usually feel confident if he's sitting directly in front of me, in front of me that I can somehow make him, you know, get him all the way to 10 o'clock. But if he's, if he's out of the studio, I don't know what I can do. He right. could be... He's well, been arrested going to these city council meetings before. He has just he, going to the city council meeting. He, he had he had himself a uh, a, a glass or a bottle that had not a beer um, written on it, <laughs> yes. and he was drinking water from it <laughs> at a city council meeting. Whenever they'd say, "No, there's a variety of things with the city council drinking game," things like. Uh, 
Every time they said master plan right. or they uh, uh, every time they voted unanimously on something. And, you know, it's it, it, making the city council meetings more fun. Yeah. Now, I the mean, city, they're boring. City council meetings are boring. City councilors will tell you over and over and ad nauseum how they want people to participate in their <laughs> system. That's a joke. I mean, it's it's just over and over <laughs> until people actually participate and give their opinions. What they want is what everybody wants, which is validation for their own opinions. We want you to come here and agree with us. Yes. Well, we don't need to go there and agree with you. Right. You just go do your thing. If, if you want to be agreed, you know, you, you got into politics for validation. What the heck is wrong with you? Well, the, the meetings where people disagree can be even more excruciating, depending on which side you're on. Uh, it certainly makes the meeting go longer. Oh, absolutely. The, 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 this is And this is the problem with the local government. And it's one of the reasons that people pick up and move for the Free State Project. Now, Marcus, you and I have both uh, moved our lives and our fortunes to here to New Hampshire in order to, according to the... the uh, the little online thing that we signed to um, work within. Excuse me, it's a. Uh, I don't have to the, the full. I, uh, put our most like the most practical effort or something yeah. towards exert the, the most practical yeah. effort towards the creation of society where the it's the protection of life, liberty, and property. I'm sorry, I thought I was holding the uh, the the thing in my hand, and I am not. I'm holding something entirely different. <laughs> telling me about the Porcupine Freedom Festival, where oh, if I you, know about that. If you think the idea of moving a bunch of folks that love the ideas of liberty together in one place is a good idea, then you probably should come to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. You can find out more about it by going to porcfest.com. That's P-O-R-C. That C is really important. I don't know it's what's... It's very a, important. Pork, B-R-K-F-E-S-T. I should probably should look that up. It's it's something different, uh, for indeed. sure. So anyway, there's going to be lots of speakers and a ton, ton of family events, lots of things to do. There's something for everybody at Pork Fest, and you'll get a glimpse of what life might be like for you here in the free state. You can book your campsite now. It's June 22nd through the 29th. Yeah, I mean, don't miss it. The Pork Fest is just, it's a really great, fun event. Uh, it's a real special event. You know, you get to be up in the beautiful mountains and the woods and hang out with lots of really interesting people. Uh, it's just a great time. I've been going since 2009, and I haven't missed one yet. Yeah, it's then. really, really awesome. Let's go to Liberty, calling in from Manchester. Liberty, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the activism that we have uh, that we were out doing today. We went that? out and handed out some FPP.cc news publications at the airport, and uh, they tried to stop us at first, but uh, we, we ended up getting it done and, and spread the message today. So, so this was um, the, the, the newspapers that the, the, free, the free Patriot Press produces? Yes. So what? Um, why you were just sort of handing out handbills as far as the uh, the bureaucrats were concerned at the the airport? I, well, they said I was soliciting, and they said that I had to get a, a permit to do it. And then there was uh, they said there was two designated uh, spots that I was allowed to hand it out in. Were but they indoors? I, they, uh, go ahead. Were they indoors? Yeah, it was indoors. We actually walked around um, the entire airport that wasn't in the secure area. I see. Oh. Very good. Did uh, now you're not soliciting because you're not trying to sell anything. You're just handing out pieces, you know, p- propaganda, as it were. So that uh, exactly. doesn't fall into that category. Solicitation requires a purchase, and there's no purchase. Um, what uh, what 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 took you there today? Why why today? I don't know. We, we were just kind of talking about what we were going to do yesterday, and that seemed like a, a good place to start out and go. I was really um, interested to see how the uh, how the bureaucrats there were, were going to react. You know, if somebody just wanted to come in and exercise their rights. Um, it went about as much as I expected. I knew they were there. They were going to try to stop us, but we just kept asking them questions, and then finally we just started doing it again. So, did you get video of this? We did. There's going to be some good videos uh, coming up very soon. Where, that's, uh, where is know, that going to be available? Uh, um, I think we're going to post it onto Free Keen. Onto Free Keen. Okay, FreeKeen.com. Oh, where is it? Free Manch. Oh, it's on Free Manch right now. Free Manch. <laughs> it's on FreeManch.com right now. There you go, FreeManch.com. And uh, what do you? What, what was the hope that you were going to achieve uh, by doing, um, you know, this this uh, you know, handing out the the literature and, and that kind of thing? I mean, because a lot of people have to say about protests that they're they're pointless. What were you hoping to achieve? 
I just wanted to uh, uh, it, not, nothing big. It wasn't going to be a take over the world type of deal, but hopefully, when people were going on their flights and while they were waiting and they were sitting around, they could, uh, you know, uh, just to get the message of liberty on their mind to get them thinking about stuff. Very good. Well, Liberty, thanks for doing it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Sure. Let's go to Nimi. I think she was uh, probably on site. I think I heard her yelling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Nimi, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. How are you? All's well. This I, is our so, former I, co-host. I'm so excited to talk to both of you. Yes, for a former co-host. And, and yes, that was me yelling in the background. It's a conservative effort here in Match. We had a phenomenal day here today, and I would encourage anyone who's listening to look at looking at Match. Just yep. it's look at Match because we we have phenomenal new mover parties that the effort and the community here is just crazy, awesome, supportive. Yeah, um, there's there's a much it. bigger Liberty community in Manchester, New Hampshire than there is in Keene, New Hampshire. Probably I mean, bigger than any probably larger than anywhere else in the state of New Hampshire. I mean yep. Manchester's a that big may be city. True. Right? And, 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 and I'll tell you that the energy over here is just phenomenal and, and that is not to reflect poorly on Keene at all because I I've lived in Keene, I've lived in Keene for 20 years before I moved to Manchester in, in January of this year. And I absolutely love Keene. I love the activism that's going on in Keene, and I certainly do not want to detract from anything that's going on over there by by trumpeting what's going on over here. We we had a phenomenal two hours over here um, today, and, and there were four of us. I mean, we went to three places and, and had, a, had a phenomenal result they, at the airport of as Joe Liberty Carrick was telling you on the last call, was it was great. We so had, where we else had did a, you go? First, uh, we went to the Manchester Police Department, and we also cop walked. Oh, I bet they, they had uh, a wonderful time seeing you there at the, the police department in Manchester. Oh, they, they, they loved us, Mark. You know. <laughs> you know. That's, that's, how could they not? Come on. We're, we're loving and endearing and awesome and all sorts of stuff. Nemi, thank you for so, the yeah, call. Had, yeah. <laughs> 855 450 free free talk live did you know that organic sulfur can cleanse and defend your body against the poisons we're exposed to each day organic sulfur crystals from sulfurdefense.com help by forcing oxygen and nutrition into your cells while eliminating heavy metals contaminants and damaging radiation defend yourself and family from toxic assault with one of the most critical and essential minerals available today order online at sulfurdefense.com that's sulfurdefense.com or call 800-593-6273. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Free Talk Live. What's the difference between a stoplight and a school bus? Um, a stoplight is a light, and a school bus is a school bus. Full of children. Oh, and right. a, so um, <laughs> the light well, doesn't have any that's, kids in it. That's, that's what you call a derelict, educated derelict. Yeah, I'm, I, out of Harvard. I'm really not a derelict. I work for a living. You are an educated derelict. <laughs> Well, Barbara, you know what? I, I agree have with fun. you. Play your game. No, no. no. I, You're a fornicator, you Mark. When Barbara. you pass that next red light, I sure hope they get you good. I hope you don't kill anybody. I'm, 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 I'm agreeing oh, with you. Oh, she hung up on you, Mark. But I agree with you, Barbara. I was telling you that I agree with you except for the stoplight thing. Children, Mark, there's children around at every red light you could possibly hear and kill someone. This, this, by the way, a gentleman. If you would run a red light at 3 in the morning when there's no traffic as far as the eye can see, then you're, you would just as soon run over a school bus and kill right. all the kids inside. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-453. That uh, last word is free as in it doesn't cost anything. Free Talk Live. Um, the digits are 3733-855-450-3733. Or you can uh, get a hold of us on Skype. We do it there, too. Our uh, username is lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. want to tell you about Buzzbox. Buzzbox is um, it's great tasting coffee. It's shade grown, 100% or, or organic. It's top 1% Arabica grade. And you can get a free pound by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Now, Buzzbox is priced at the same price commensurately with uh, other high end coffees. It's, uh, I, I, I can't remember precisely what the rates are, but it's, you know, it's, it's relatively similar. I think it's something like $15 a pound with shipping. And that's what high-end coffee costs, you know, sad yes. to say. Yes. But what they do is they do something entirely different. Not only do they um, they only purchase from people within their co-op who, you know, go about, you know, raising things in an organic, sustainable fashion. They give uh, microloans to the people to get involved in this co-op. But they also give some of the profits that they make from selling coffee to uh, fund um, microloans through World Vision with their partners. One of those partners is Free Talk Live. We're hoping to get a thousand of our listeners who, like me, have decided to get their coffee through Buzzbox. And this is, it's great coffee. And it what it does is it removes from my mind having to worry about coffee because it arrives in the mail. I just set it for how often I need coffee. It takes a little, it takes weeks to figure out exactly how much coffee you consume. And if you come up with some extra, no big deal. It's great coffee. Give it to a friend. Right. Um, you know, just take the extra pound you got. Give it to a friend. Not now, that does it deal. come as whole beans or ground? Or Your can, choice. Oh, okay, good. You can do whatever you want. I prefer my coffee ground. I'm just not looking for a hobby. Sure. But some people really like that experience of grinding their own coffees, doing the French press thing. Yeah. And they actually will give you the right grinding for whatever device you use. I'm happy with my drip coffee maker, which, you know, is time to go off at a certain time as long as I remember to put the water in it. And, <laughs> uh, you know, that's good for me. Other people, they need to have the whole uh, shebang. And yeah, I, I do the whole shebang. Yep. I, I have like a percolator, actually, is what I use. <laughs> How much coffee do you consume in a day? <laughs> it's a small percolator. Okay. I mean, it, it can make from, you know, two to eight cups. Okay. That's so a pretty small It's percolator. not like a giant one that you would think of like maybe your mother had for a party, you book, know? Book, 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 book. Yep. book, book, book. 
<laughs> so you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, give you a free pound, you pay the shipping, and you can cancel your subscription anytime. You're signing up for a subscription to get the uh, free pound, but you can cancel it at any time. It's great coffee. Buzzbox. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. Mm, coffee is tasty. It's so, one of my favorite things. Me too. So we were talking about marriage, modern marriage, and historical marriage, and we're reading this article uh, from the independent co.uk and uh we're she's we're talking about the uh, the history so behind the seismic cultural change towards the love marriage were two things so we're talking about the uh the change from uh, arranged marriages to a love marriage right first the industrial revolution of the late 1700s meant that young people earned a wage and had more control of their own destiny uh, second, this was the period of enlightenment. So this is, you know, up till then, they just sort of lived at home, right? Yeah. No, but they're going back now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Unfortunately for the parents. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for everybody. <laughs> right. Uh, young people started to view human relationships as organized by rationale and justice uh, rather than by force and birthright. Happiness became a legitimate goal. Force and uh, birthright. These are just some stinking, crappy ideas. Yes, exactly. Uh, then, uh, when Queen Victoria walked down the aisle in 1840 in an elaborate white gown and accompanied by music, the public was mesmerized. Fancy weddings became the rage. The fairy uh, tale had begun. What What year was this? That was in 1840. Now, it's interesting. Fancy weddings were nothing new in English royalty at that point. Uh, King Henry VIII was known for some fantastic weddings. He had several. Um, so, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. That it's the Victorian period, after all. I guess people were becoming more wealthy, right? So they had enough money to, to, to pay attention to things besides sustaining just subsistence. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. That's, that's I guess, where they were kind of, she was going here with saying that, you know, younger people had jobs, they had a little more independence, their own money, right? And time, time to consider things. Uh, commentators were worried about this new ideal. Of course they were. Commentators have wrung their hands over anything new for as long as commentators have been allowed to commentate. Well, isn't that really the job of the commentator? Yeah. Well, I don't know that <laughs> hand wringing necessarily is, but you know, parsing things. I think that some commentators can push forward new ideas, and right. uh, you know, that's what I hope to do here on Free Talk Live. Not necessarily new ideas, but good ones. Some of them are new. Some of them are old. Yes, but they're always new to somebody. Uh, if marriage was based on something as fickle as romantic love, wouldn't such unions be unstable? And guess what? They were right. According to Elizabeth Gilbert in her marriage memoir, Committed, uh, whenever a culture turns its back on arranged marriages in favor of the love marriage, divorce rates rocket. Of course, this isn't to say that arranged marriages are the formula for a robust marriage. Rather, it questions whether stringent, uh, lifelong unions are the formula for modern society. Yeah, I mean, you, you really kind of got to wonder. You come into this world by yourself. You're going to go out by yourself. I think that for some people, it's really a great idea to have, uh, you know, a marriage that lasts a lifetime. Mine is great, and my wife really does. She she excels in areas that I am poor at and yeah. uh you know, apparently she finds some of my uh, character traits to be worthy of hanging out with, too. So I like that. I can't imagine my life without her there. But, you know, at some point or another, I know how this story ends. Sure. One of us leaves or one of us dies. That's right. I mean, that's how it goes for everybody. Yeah, uh, not everybody. Sure. That's uh, why I know the story. How the story goes. Yeah. Occasionally, occasionally, There's I a, suppose a, a heavenly ascension. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, two people could die at the same time. Yeah, right? that's the one. That's a, the, the, that is the uh, the coin standing on its I edge. Well, there. Uh, I mean, it can be uh, tragic, right? Weird Al Yankovic. His parents both died in their house. Uh, they were killed by carbon monoxide. They did not have a carbon monoxide detector, hmm. and there was a problem with their chimney. And they died from carbon monoxide poisoning together. It'll get you because uh, you can't even smell it. Yes, that's right. So they they died together, uh, unfortunately, right, in a tragic accident. Um, so back to this article. Um, For the first time in history, marriage and cohabitation are no longer a necessity. As recently as 100 years ago, it was impossible to live alone. 
Uh, there was no sliced bread, online deliveries, or wash washer dryers. You yeah. simply you, you just you needed the free slave labor <laughs> of a spouse. Exactly, you had to shack up. There are now 3.5 million people over 45 living alone in the UK, an increase of 25 percent since the mid 1990s. More people are choosing to live alone because they can. I find this very interesting. That. I, I think it's true that people are choosing to live alone because they can. Because if, like you joked or quipped earlier, saying like a lot of kids are going back home, right? After and and that's true because they can't live alone. Uh, they financially can't afford it, right? They financially can't afford it. They, they, but, they either bought into the college thing and they've got so much debt they're just servicing debt, or in some cases they just simply can't get jobs that pay enough. Um, and in a lot of cases it's both of those those situations. So sure, it's it's tough. And I've got to say, if it wasn't for wanting to. Uh, you know, to date, and by date I mean have sex. Uh, <laughs> I would have stayed at home. I don't, you know, it was kind of a good deal. Uh, we, you know, it, after college, I went back and lived with my mother briefly, and I had a girlfriend at the time. And then I had my girlfriend come over, and my mother was very annoying. And I said, I have to leave now. I have to move out. I I can't do this. Just can't do it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's what got me out of the house. That's what it. That's what it does. That's generally. I don't know the males I talk to. Generally, this is the case. Some people don't have it so great at home, but I did, and that was the only reason I left. <laughs> Heck, I had just lived down the street from my mom most of my life. Right. Or well, that I had a home. Eight fifty five four fifty three. What do you think about arranged marriages? Is it a. It, 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 does, is there any value to this? 855 free. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors, so it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card, and you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call one 800 9 953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life.
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. We're here live with you taking your calls at 855-453. It's Mark and Marcus. Ian is out at a city council meeting. I'm he's, hope, he's, hoping he's, he hasn't been arrested as far as we know. Yeah, we haven't gotten a text saying Ian has been arrested at this point. So it's uh, this is, has, has happened in the <laughs> history of Free Talk Live. It's not like it's impossible for this to have occurred. If you're looking for liberty-oriented news, certainly you can listen to Free Talk Live. You can go to freetalklive.com. We've got a news aggregator there. But I'd say the number one pl- news aggregator for liberty-oriented news is freedomsphoenix.com. At freedomsphoenix.com, they've got news stories that, that really that run the gamut, whether it's a, the economy or a technology communications, the rise of the police state, science, a great deal of stuff over at freedomsphoenix.com. I get their daily dispatch actually twice a day. Um, I don't know if uh, everybody gets it that way or if I signed up for something special, but you can get their daily dispatch at freedomsphoenix.com. Just reading the titles makes me feel up to date. (laughs) So we are talking about this uh, story. At this point, it's been a history of uh, marriage. And I think it's all quite interesting um you know is marriage you know what is what is marriage today what's the purpose of marriage today right i mean that's the the author kind of some of the things she started to touch on was to say that you know arranged marriages sure they stayed together and now once people have moved to these love based marriages a lot of people don't stay together and i also wonder um you know we we all snicker and sneer at those that have been uh, married um, i think 3 is probably the dividing line depending on your age exactly but how many how many marriages to to oh. you're just sort of a serial <laughs> divorcer right but uh, you know many relationships are they might as well be marriages if you've been going out with somebody long enough lived in the same domicile with someone long enough Eh, what's the what is really the difference between that and a divorce? Sure, I mean I uh, I know people that have been together for many many years and are not you know legally married. Um, you know, but you know I think of that. I mean they're a couple. Um, to me I don't care whether people are married or not. Um, I just you know it's just important to know whether they're together or not. Um, but yeah, I mean what I don't know that it, that it matters much. I mean it matters to some people, right? When you go to the legality of it, it does certainly matter to some. I kind of feel like marriage is uh, the purpose the the purpose of getting married, making the commitment, and that sort of thing is really for the kids. Otherwise, why would you necessarily do it? You can co-own things, Marcus. You and I could, if we chose, co-own a house together. That's right. We don't have to even live in it together. Right. Um, we could co-own a car or a jet ski or a variety of things. Sure. Um, but if we co-owned all those things, people might think that they we would were certainly begin to wonder if we, put the, <laughs> if we, were, if we were stacking those up. What exactly aren't these guys saying? Right. <laughs> all right. Well, gender equality has further pushed marriage into the non-essentials category. Just 40 years ago, in some U.S. states, a woman couldn't take out a loan or start a business without her husband's signature. I've got to say that this is this is something that women today probably just don't know. You know, because there's so much about the women's rights movement uh, that, uh, you know, the, the, you hear the 
you hear the caterwauling and, and that sort of things. And, and I, I'm so unmoved by it. But this is absolutely the biggest thing. The fact that gals couldn't take out loans. They couldn't have, a, in some cases, property in their own name. My mother still has credit cards that say that, that have my dad's name on them. Mrs. C. E. Edge, right? Right. On the credit card. Right. My dad has been dead for more than 10 years, and she, and she has been divorced from him since I was 11. Wow. This is more than 30 years. Wow. So it just kind of goes, in the you know, the now consider this isn't some, she's conservative, but she was the second field engineer for General Telephone and Electronics. This is not a woman of, of no uh, substance at all. Sure. She just, eh, you know, whatever, let it go. But she, likely when she got married, she couldn't. Take out loans without her husband, you know, without her husband's uh, consent and those sorts of uh, things. I don't know, little lady. Is uh, where's your husband at? That <laughs> kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's it's incredible to think about that from today's modern perspective, right? Where that's absolutely not the case. Thank goodness, you know. I think today's modern perspective, uh, the expectation is, is you don't want to see a, a man of any age come in because you're like, well, he's not going to buy unless his wife's here. <laughs> I think it's the opposite. I really do believe the pendulum has swung, and that um, you know men are, you know, their 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 usefulness to culture has uh, it's on its way way out. At this point, really, what are we good for? Killing bugs, reaching tall <laughs> things, moving heavy objects, the occasional sexual interlude. <laughs> Uh, virtual reality machines are going to knock off the last one. Um, you can get one of those. Little, my mom does have one of those little stretchy, grabby things. You know, it's about three three inches, kind yes, of a robot yes. hand. That's two of them eliminated right there. If you can stomach the bug killing, and you know, now, and obviously, you know, you're kind of running through these, like, you know, the the generalizations of what a man does, right? In that the male female relationship, which to some extent are true sometimes, or maybe more times than not, but not always. Well, uh, I mean, look at Dennis Kucinich. His wife is very tall, and he is very short. <laughs> Indeed. In that relationship, she is getting the things off the top shelf. She looks like she could kill a bug, too. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> but oh, at this point, in this generation, women younger, by this generation, I mean the youngest, 18 to 24-year-old females make more money than 18 to 24 year old males when you start to figure in unemployment which has hit the, the recent unemployment rash that has hit men much harder than it has hit women it it's you know the you're talking about earning ratios really gets um, messed up so you know men aren't the breadwinners that they used to be no no i, I would agree with that um to uh, to a large extent i'm not sure why the ladies stick around but they do <laughs> um so there. Uh, so anyway, uh, back to this article. There is a uh, a proper word for marrying up the social ladder. There is. Uh, it's called hypergamy. Hypergamy. I, I think I'm. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. Um, historically, this abounded in this abounded in times and cultures where one sex had fewer rights. Now that gender roles are blurring, emotional fulfillment usurps social status in the selection of a life partner, but the problem is that emotional fulfillment is fickle and variable. You know, I've found, though, um, I've, I've, I've read, and I think that I agree with this for me, is that you're going to do best with somebody who's from your sort of uh, cultural uh, class, whatever that might be. And I think that there's a whole bunch of gradations from this, um, but who has a personality that's sort of the opposite of yours. Mm. So it's an opposite personality, similar similar upbringings. Yeah, I mean, I think the similar upbringings uh, does a, has a great effect on on a relationship because you have similar values, right? And in, in meaning like, you, you know, you value certain things in a similar fashion, and that really helps to get along. Right. If one person values uh, something a lot more than someone else, it's it's going to be a little tough time there. Yep. I think I you know I don't know how those values get put into place. I'm sure you can find people who are from different um, upbringings uh, than you that will be a good match, but it, it's probably just a little easier. Yeah, I think way. it is easier. Uh, even when it comes to starting a family, it is now socially acceptable and financially viable to do so sans spouse. Yeah, uh, you can the, do it. Yep. In the 1950s, women who fell pregnant outside wedlock were ushered to mother and baby homes and in some cases, mental asylums. In just 60 years, attitudes have changed so much that there are now 2 million single parents in the UK and 23% of 14-year-olds grow up in a single parent household. Uh, we now have co-parent co matchmaking sites 
and sperm donor networks, providing yep. a platform for independent men and women to set the maternity or paternity process in motion without the hassle of romantic entanglement. Well, some people use uh, you know sperm donors for. Uh, you know, just because the husband's infertile or whatever. But, uh, sure. you know, there's a variety of things that could be done. When when I was younger, they used to, there was a lot of hand-wringing about single parenthood, yeah. you know. And, uh, you know, I've seen statistics of homes without fathers and what that's like. And usually that's what you're dealing with because women get custody like 90% of the time. Right. Uh, but I wonder, we've now been able to see what that's like. So what's, is it... Is it that bad or is it, um, you know, just statistically you could show a deviation from the norm. If, uh, you know, one of a million people is going to grow up to be a bank robber and but three out of a, a million people um, that would grow up to be bank robbers are from, you know, say, uh, uh, you know, single parent homes or, or the I guess the being from a single parent home triples your likelihood of being a bank robber. You're still not very likely at three out of a million. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, you know, I think it's interesting because, um, I, I mean, I think for uh, a lot of people, they're still going to either get married or be together with someone and have the kids and have the family. I think that that's still important to a lot of people. But I think really what this is about is saying, look, other different situations are okay and they work okay, you know, that those are legitimate you know, and I think that that's really a big part of what she's saying here. Now, when I say bank robber, I don't mean yeah. somebody who went to Wharton Business School and uh, got a bailout from the government. <laughs> that's not what I mean. 855-450-FREE or LRN.FM on Skype. Quantum Vibe, it's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press. The flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have over 8 million square feet of top quality flooring that must be cleared out by end of quarter, March 31st. Get donor oak laminate flooring for only 49 cents a square foot. Exotic black mamba hand-scraped bamboo for just $1.89. Even three-quarter inch pre-finished hickory hardwood for an unheard of $2.59 a square foot. They've got free samples at your local store, plus 22 months special financing available. So go to LumberLiquidators.com now to find the store nearest you. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand. And this is Jessica Armand. Here with your Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,326, silver at $20.29, and Bitcoin is trading at $592. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem, operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush, online at SovereignBTC.com. And from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy at 512-343-6494 or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216624. And from the Soleil School, enrolling children from 5 through 10 
in Austin. Visit soleilschool.com. And now the news. Security fixes that address the problems Mt. Gox blamed for the loss of bitcoins were put into place Wednesday. PC World reports that the software, known as Bitcoin QT, has been renamed as Bitcoin Core. The rebranding is intended to show that it runs the core infrastructure of the cryptocurrency's transaction and verification network. According to the release notes, the latest version of Bitcoin software contains more than a half dozen fixes for transaction malleability. A surprise appearance Tuesday at the 2014 TED conference in Vancouver, Canada. Brian Hagen has this story. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, by use of a remote-controlled satellite robot, appeared on stage to address the conference goers, outlining why he took the risk to make off with 1.7 million documents from the agency. I don't want to harm my government. I want to help my government. Snowden told the crowd that stopping terrorism is not the goal of the NSA's massive surveillance program. The bottom line is that terrorism has always been what we in the intelligence world would call a cover for action. Terrorism is something that provokes an emotional response that allows people to rationalize authorizing uh, powers and programs that they wouldn't give otherwise. Snowden concluded his talk by saying, We don't have to give up our privacy to have good government. We don't have to give up our liberty to have security. I'm Brian Hagan reporting for the Liberty Beat. The Obama administration won't give up the fight on climate change. On Wednesday, the White House revealed a new website serving as a one-stop location for a massive amount of climate change data. The LA Times reports the information contained on the site had previously been spread across the websites of numerous government agencies. The website is President Obama's latest move to deliver on his promise to use his executive authority to confront climate change despite congressional inaction. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure water filtration, the only gravity-driven all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water as well. Find them in Austin at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online at massappealinc.com. And from Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Wednesday, Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen stated the U.S. Central Bank would likely end its bond-buying program by the fall and begin raising interest rates in the first half of 2015. Speaking at her first news conference as chair, Yellen discussed the bond-buying program known as quantitative easing. Yellen stated that the Fed planned to wait a considerable time before pushing up interest rates. When further questioned how long this would actually take, the chairwoman's answer? Six months. The General Counsel and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence told the U.S. Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board that a recently revealed foreign surveillance program is specific with its targets and not bulk data collection. Robert Lidd is quoted here, getting a whole bunch of communications, hanging on to them, and then figuring out later what you want. This is not that. This is a situation where we figure out what we want, and we get that specifically. Lit was responding to a Washington Post report on the Mystic program, which reportedly is capable of recording 100% of a foreign country's telephone calls. You've been listening to The Liberty Beat. Remember, freeing your mind is freeing our world. In local news, 23-year-old shitty graffiti artist Adam Zane has captured the heart of 19-year-old college sophomore Jessica Tissolo. Zane, who goes by the graffiti handle Slice, met Tissolo last summer at an annoyingly self-aware dive bar where the talentless artist caught Tissolo's eye with his cliched sleeve tattoos of trite Japanese imagery and the fact that he was wearing a winter hat indoors in the middle of June. His art is really just the absolute worst. I think we're going to get married someday. And now for This Week in Tech, brought to you by LG. An excited groom sends text messages to his buddies during his bride's vow. 
Films. And a collection of VHS tapes are held onto for one more year. In other news, a burglar makes sure to crack the glass on a family portrait before leaving. There's nothing in the employee handbook about groping dead co-workers, an employee says. And a report finds that nobody's heard from David Blaine in a while, so somebody should probably check to see if he died in one of those things. Mere seconds have passed, yet we feel as though we've known you a thousand lifetimes. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Five four fifty three. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. It's Mark with you and Marcus. Our normal first chair host Ian is off at a city council meeting. How exciting! Oh yeah, riveting stuff. I guess they're going to be reading a letter about uh, how a Robin Hooder. That's a person who. Uh, Feeds meters before the meter maid can come around and give you a ticket. So uh, Robin Hooder got harassed by a tow truck driver for video recording. Mm. And um, they are also going to be talking about raising the parking rates. Now, yeah, I heard ci- about this. The city of Keene has repeatedly, over and over, said there's no problem with the Robin Hooders filling the parking meters. Mm. But it, they've they've gone after them for harassing the meter maids, which is to say the trying to get ahead of the meter maids and fill the meters, and the meter maids will like run in weird fashions and stuff. It's just, it's it's really it all should be put to the Benny Hill music. Yes, uh, it's it's silly stuff, but they have these quotas essentially for the meter maids, and they give them you know they they get upset if the meter maids don't reach them. But of course, the Robin Hooders are filling the meters, so the meter maids can't reach the quotas, and. It's this whole thing. Why don't they just come out and say, well, it's about the money. Sure, of, it's course, about, of course, we, course it's about the money. It's a tax for businesses and people who go downtown. What else would it possibly be? Yeah, I mean, that's all it's ever been. And for anybody to pretend that that's not what it's about is, is just silly. Now, and the the meter maids, the, 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 the whole tar- parking system runs in the red. Yeah. In most cities, this is is likely true. I don't know. In Keene, New Hampshire, it's true. The, when you look at the meter maid's cost versus how much revenue they bring in, it's it doesn't make any sense. So if they really want to cut costs, they can do it. They can take the meter maid and put them to work doing something else in the bureaucracy of the city. Right. Then they can have a different job. It's not like a job hasn't come open in the last two years. The Robin Hooders have been doing this. Right. So let them go. One of them has already gone on and done some other job for the city and then left and went on and did something else. Yes. So, yeah, this can be done. Anyway, you can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about the history of marriage, arranged marriages versus love marriage, why people are marrying today. It's a fascinating story. Where's this one from? (laughs) Yeah, this one's from independent.co.uk. That's right. They've been giving all the the statistics from the UK. Right, from the United Kingdom, which is very – you know, what's interesting about the United Kingdom is uh, an American's perspective on what is the United Kingdom. Like people say England, say people say United Kingdom. And recently I learned a little bit about that, and I learned that, wow, I didn't really understand that very well. What the UK is? Yeah, what the the difference between the UK, England, Britain, Great Britain, right? Like these are all actually different things. Yeah, oh, yeah um, I when I think of it, I just think of the whole little island right. deal there. Yes, exactly. And sadly for Ireland, I kind of just mash them in there because I'm not exactly sure where, um, you know, there's Northern Ireland or Southern Ireland. I don't know. I don't know which one's which. I know that Ireland is its own separate country. That Wales and Scotland, Scottish, uh, you know, they wish they were on their own separate country. And the Cornish have just been putting up with English for a very long time. Right. So United Kingdom is actually like a collection of little countries. So England, but it spans Wales, the globe. Yes, it does. Um, the Pitcairn Islands, for instance, <laughs> right out in the South Pacific. Uh, there's uh, the Falklands. Mm. There's a variety of different places that are also United Kingdom. That I don't know. I mean, whether whether they use the would, would be using the statistics. When I think of it, I just think of that sort of that islandy area. Sure. There. Well, actually, when you talk about that island area, the largest island there, the largest landmass is. The island of Great Britain. Great Britain. Yes. Yes. So when you say Great Britain, you're actually referring Talking about to Sc- Scotland, Wales, and England. Right, but not all in Cornwall. But, but if they have other little islands off of them, they're they're not included because Great Britain is just that one single island. 
you see. So Wales might have like another little island or two yep. or something off the side. Not Great Britain. Not Great Britain. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so uh, we're I think we're going to finish up this article here. Uh, basically, it kind of I'm going to skip it, skip down a little bit. The author just talks about how in modern times, uh, for her and lots of people, marriage doesn't seem like a necessity. Um, I don't think it does to a lot of people seem like a necessity. To me, it seems like a good way to raise kids. Yes. but you know, after that. I, I, but not I, even that. Like she says, you know, she talks about how, like, you know, people can even raise kids outside of, uh, uh, you know, outside of a two-parent, uh, you know, environment. You know, I've heard of uh, couples breaking up after the kids, uh, you know, are above eight, the age of 18. Yeah. And the kids caterwaul and make all kinds of noise about it as though this is somehow their <laughs> their decision. And right. I think it's interesting because if people yeah. are going to break up, and like I said, every relationship ends one of two ways, except for the odd relationship where you have uh, you know both of them dying in a cr- tragic accident. Somebody dies or somebody leaves. Well, you know why the kids get upset even when they're older? Because you have your own, like imagine you have your own life and now you got to go, oh man, you got to make two trips for Christmas mm. and two trips for this. Uh, oh man, come on. What about Can't I in- just get you guys together? Like, <laughs> What about the inheritance though? When they get together, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is one of the, th- this is where it goes. I sure. mean, people talk, think about these things. Oh so, yeah, yeah. You know, the every, the two couples have their, um, have their, their kids, they wait until they're older, they break up, then they get together and now they've got these sort of mixed families that know nothing of each other and mm-hmm. spend have spent no time together and right. intend to spend no time together. But the husband and wife, they do spend time around the other kids. Sure. Do uh, you know, so you can spend another 15 or 20 years together. People are living longer. Sure. Which one makes more sense? The which which uh marriage is the one that you honor more. <laughs> right. And this is really an interesting question. It is. The, 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 the natural children of the, the parent are going to say, hey, well, this is all, every everything you got is ours. <laughs> right. But the, um, you know, the, the couple there that might have been together for as long as 20 years, the, the wife is now going to get the money and lion's share of the money and the kids aren't going to like that at all. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got birthrights. Remember, <laughs> birthrights. The birthrights. Birthrights in force. <laughs> this is what the the article was, uh, you know, uh, talking about there from the very beginning. People love their birthrights. They're important to them. Yeah. Well, I, I, my best advice is don't worry about that stuff. Yeah, go out and make your own money. Exactly. Quit, you know, sponging off of somebody else's uh, i mean my parents divorced and both of my parents remarried after i was out of uh over the age of 18 i don't remember when exactly um but uh my father died a few years ago and since then uh my brother and i we both have spent time with our uh you know our stepmom and her her side of the family mm-hmm. which would be like our stepbrothers but they're like older than us we didn't live live with them or anything but they're family you know we, we really like them because they're Good, nice people. We Who got the money when your dad died? Um, well, it it's kind of you know. Did you get anything? I uh, uh, yes. I mean, okay. you know, it was it was reasonable. You okay. know, I mean, it was all worked out ahead of time. So, uh, I I think that uh, I think people do put a lot of the more money there is, the more squabbling there's going to yeah, be. But over I it. don't I don't worry about that. Though, you I know. know I that was never my focus, and I didn't really care. I got lucky. I had a uh, a great uncle who was mm-hmm. gay. Oh. So that's good. You know, I got a, a small and I got an inheritance from him that was enough to buy a piece of property on which I could then go into debt building a house. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so in this article uh, near the end, she says uh, more research from America this week claims to have found a region inside the brain called the interior insular, which plays a role in who we select to fall in love with. It's it, interesting. It is. Separate. I would have assumed it was personality based. <laughs> you know, you take the Myers no. Briggs personality test, you come up whatever you Mark, are. Your brain wants you to believe that, but let's remember, <laughs> your brain is always in control. Uh, it is uh, separate to the posterior insular, which makes decisions about who we lust and desire. This tallies with other more established research. Uh, that we have two separate drives for love, the fervent butterflies in your tummy feelings of romantic love and the long-term affectionate feelings of attachment. The fairy tale narrative has us be- seeking both in one person, but I'm sorry to report that science increasingly proves that they are separate. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's the person you should be with, 
and the person you want to be with. <laughs> exactly. And rarely is the person that you want to be with the person you should be with. I found this out over dating for a period of time that, uh, you know, I'm not very good at picking the right person for me. <laughs> that could hmm. be. Yeah. Yeah. That was a pro- that was a problem. Yeah. Have you uh, experienced this in your life? Uh, you know, how does one go about picking the right person? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Mark with you. And Marcus, that was just the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm so <laughs> bad at giving credit where credit has been paid for on the show that I actually sell sponsorships on. It's well, terrible. Well, you're, I mean, normally, you you know, Ian takes care of a lot of things that you're doing tonight, right? So you're doing a lot of things that you normally don't do. I'm, I honestly, I'm petrified. <laughs> I, I, I'm in a state as when I am in the first chair, I am in a state of constant upset. And whereas when I'm over in the second chair, I just pipe in and you know make fun of Ian's dumb <laughs> remarks now and then. Uh, you know, it's so easy. I've been doing that for. 12 years, no big deal, but I'm here, I'm making sure the cam's working, I'm writing down the show topics, I'm making sure the live reads are done, and and a variety of all kinds of other things, and it's just, it's a lot of balls to keep in the air, uh, to use my juggler analogy here. So, um, yeah, the Pro XPN ball is a ball that has uh, been dropped (laughs) during this show, and oftentimes when I'm behind the... uh, the microphone here. But if you value your online privacy, you do need ProXPN. ProXPN is a global virtual private network that allows all of your data to be encrypted back and forth. There was a situation at the Texas Bitcoin conference where it looks like, and I can't say, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert here. Please don't say that everything that I say is um, factually true, but I'm doing my best. I apparently some um, hacksaws sniffed some packets mm. at the Texas Bitcoin conference and okay. they got people they got people's passwords to their blockchain.info accounts and a few people had their accounts emptied. Yeah. Now blockchain is a pretty a pretty secure way to keep your bitcoins. It can't be broken into and the blockchain doesn't have your um your your bitcoins, but the fact is, is if somebody's got your username and your password and you know, you don't have yeah. the two-factor authentication on there or whatever. They're they're getting in. Yeah. So th- that's what happened there at the Texas Bitcoin Conference. But everybody that was using Pro XPN, and I was, mm-hmm. didn't get their packet sniffed. Now I am blindly lucky here because I have turned on and turned off Pro XPN in different situations. Okay. Um, you know, there's been times where I'm like, I'm not getting fast internet connection. I wonder if it's this and I'll turn it off and it'll stay off for days. Sure. And then I'll be like, oh yes, I have to be secure. I'll turn it back on. And, uh, you know. I think that's not uncommon. I, I think it's not uncommon. But when you're out, I happen to have it on. I didn't think about turning it on. I just happened to have it on at the time. And it saved me. Yeah, I would have had all the bitcoins taken out of my blockchain account, and I would have been a mad mamma jamma. Yeah. But ProXPN saved me, and they can save you, and they can do it for as little as five dollars a month. You can go there, you can get a premium account um, with unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world. I I like to use the ones in like Singapore and the Netherlands. It makes me feel worldly and stuff. <laughs> I have no clue why I do that. Um, so you can privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and this is important, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. Uh, you get all of uh, that for a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You go to proxpn.com slash FTL, use promo code FTL20, and get the security and privacy that you've uh, that you've got the right to. You've got to you know you buy this. It's 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 something you gotta pay for, but you can have uh, security and privacy. Use coupon code FTL twenty. If you pay in Bitcoin, you get an additional thirty percent off. So it's just a huge savings if you pay in Bitcoin. Proxpn.com slash FTL. So we are uh, reading this article about uh, marriage and its changing faces. But uh, let's go to. The phone lines go to Skype. Nathan, calling in from Texas. Is that right, Nathan? That's right. Oh, I also had a question about the Bitcoin conference. Was that you at Molyneux's talk? I did introduce Stefan Molyneux. I am the dashing man that introduced him. Were you the gentleman holding the microphone over to the left? I don't know what side of the screen I would have been on. Um, I suppose, yeah, left if you were videotaping from the back of the room. Yes, I did hold microphones. Because there was an intimidating-looking fellow who I thought was a Secret Service guy with this earpiece and uh, holding the microphone for people who were asking <laughs> the questions. I'm constantly forgetting okay. the ear earpiece in my ear. Um, you know, the my I I paid good money for the Bluetooth he- headset, and so I've got a nice one that fits nicely, and I just I forget about it. Yeah. 
But yes, uh, uh, when I get dressed up, I look for all the world um, as privileged, white, and male as you can. Yeah, you did a good job. I was definitely intimidated. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so this inter- it's interesting, this marriage topic, because it kind of dovetails with uh, a lot of other kind of diseases of affluence, you could say, like, you know, where, where people ask, well, what about this problem? or What about that problem? And they're only problems because of the modern world and people, you know, economic progress has been made so that people have a higher standard of living and they have more leisure time. So, for example, you could ask about drug addiction and you could say, well, people were smoking uh, 100 years ago or 1,000 years ago. They've smoked weed for, you know, however long. But it's only that today we have a lot of leisure time that, um, you know, that people have problems like drug addiction. And this marriage thing well, is kind of the same way. You know, I've read um, and I, I believe it is that uh, people <laughs> – Throughout most of human history, have been drunk. Um, you know, when you're, you're <laughs> the fact is, is that water wasn't safe or good, so you had to do something with it. Brewing it, um, it became a way to to do that. They'd, they'd have watered down beer and watered down wine as their refreshment throughout the day. They'd start breakfast off with beer, um, and they didn't stop. All day long. In some cultures, it's uh, you know only males, and I imagine there's some that it might be only females. I don't know, but um, it's it's kind of it's fascinating to think how the uh, you know the, the the altered mind affects human history. And it, uh, but with this marriage thing, it's that people didn't really live that long in the past, and so they didn't really have to deal with this whole issue of well, do I stay with this partner or this partner, and for how long? And how do we split property up if we decide, you know, because most people didn't live past the age of 30 or 40 or whatever. Well, that's the average. Um, it's not necessarily how, I mean, when you start removing, uh, you know, child deaths, you know, people, when you, t- when you take the average age of the person who lived past five years old and you put that in, people tended to live longer, or quite a bit longer. And also you had to uh, consider that, even though people, would, some people would die young, others would make it to eighty, and they'd still stay married because that was what you did. Right, but it just seems like a lot of these um, these problems that the art that the things that people call problems are sort of only problems because of our affluence. Like in this case, um, lit, like uh, like for example, one issue that I was going to mention is this uh, this idea of parents uh, having to you know p- kids moving back in with their parents. And it's interesting that people are kind of complaining about this because multi-generational households have been the norm for most of human history. And right? it's th- they still are in most of the globe. When you start taking a look, when you look around the world, even in Europe, it's, it's relatively common for the older folks to move downstairs into the basement and leave their, um, you know, their, their children upstairs to have kids and, you know, stupid in their old bedroom. It makes, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's just as it makes it make any sense at all. But um, do you have more, Nathan? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. 855 free or LRN.FM on Skype. Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was 
kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hardworking men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power, but there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. While waiting to interview for a web consultant position with local marketing firm Bizco, applicant Ryan Ehrlich told Onion reporters he wasn't entirely sure he was dynamic enough for his prospective employer. When I first saw that the agency was looking for a leader willing to contribute as a valued member of the team, I thought it was the perfect fit. But the more I think about it, the less I'm sure I'm actually an energetic self-starter. I mean, I think I'm a versatile, independent thinker, but Honestly, how do you even know for sure? Ehrlich, who found Bisco's online job posting earlier this week, went on to express doubts that he truly possesses the forward-thinking instincts and next-generation idea assets required to work with the fast-paced marketing firm's team of self-starters. Can I reimagine a brand for a digital landscape? Sure. But do I really have the energy, skills, enthusiasm, and passion to be a part of this dynamic, growth-oriented company? I just don't know. Oh, God. Who am I kidding? There's... There's no way I'm on the cutting edge. This is the Onion News Network. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Hey, it's Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. And those of you listening to the show for more than a segment know more about what's been discussed than I do, because I have not been here for the past hour and a half. We can talk about why here in a little bit, Um, and I guess you guys have been talking about marriage, and there's more to discuss, so we'll get back into that. But first... For any of you who spent any kind of time reading things like sales books or, um, you know, these uplifting uh, self-help books is, you know, you realize that in the arena of convincing people of things, there's a lot of there's there's some things that work and some things that don't. Right. Well, um, if somebody spent some time really looking at the numbers um, and, and, and parsing out what works and what doesn't work, that'd be valuable information, wouldn't it? Well, Dr. Matt Barney has been working for 20 years doing that just that, and he's putting together a new program. It's called Leader Amp, and what the intention is is to um, you know, with your with a smartphone application, measure each person and tailor a customized development plan that could uh, then be um, you can use to become more convincing. Now, to be more being convincing is an incredibly valuable trait. I don't care if you're in sales or what you do, but you you're always selling. You're constantly selling in your relationships, whatever you're doing. Being a, being convincing is a very good thing. It's a valuable tool. And I signed up for LeaderAmp today at leaderamp.freetalklive.com in order to, well, 
make myself more convincing. I want to take the test. I the, you know, there's a, there's a test. They'll give you a rating on how convincing you are. Some tips on how to be more convincing. I'm very excited about it. Leader Amp dot freetalklive.com you can do it too just like i did today so this is an indiegogo campaign they're working on it already and uh, you get some some things if you uh, sign up and it's worth it leaderamp.freetalklive.com i'm excited all right so you guys were talking with nathan a moment ago about marriage well it's a little mixed up Uh, so ian's back here on uh the the first mic after having harangued the bureaucrats we were talking about no i didn't get to speak at the meeting but um yeah and nathan called in he was uh had some comments all right nathan in texas you're on via skype hello did you have a good meeting yeah go ahead with your thoughts well, I wanted to wrap up this uh, marriage issue and kind of uh, just give my thoughts on it. I, whenever I think of this uh, polygamy versus monogamy versus serial divorce issue, I usually think of these ancient Egyptian harems where, you know, you have like 5,000 women in the, in the harem, but there's still a queen to uh, oversee the harem. So it's kind of like humans have both this monogamous aspect and this polygamous aspect. And I don't really think that you know, you can say that this is that monogamy is the sole way that that people should live, or that you know, marriage has to be that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree. I think that you know, just saying that oh, one way is good for everybody just seems ridiculous, abs- absurd for almost anything, right? So, yeah, I think some people uh, one thing is better, and for other people, something else. I'm skeptical of polygamy as um, it sort of. <sighs> Being, I don't know. It's it seems like the transition from wherever we are today to where whatever that is uh, for them. I'm all for it. Good luck. But it just it it seems like it's wrought with problems. Most of the um, polyg- but what reli- what relationships aren't. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> well, extracting yourself from uh, monogamous relationships, I'm reasonably good at. I've done it many <laughs> times. Um, this polygamous thing seems to seems to I don't know. For me, it seems to ruin relationships and make people unhappy. That's what I've seen. For the people that it's good for, good. All the best. I've seen a lot of people in monogamous relationships that are unhappy, and there are plenty of people in polygamous relationships that really speak highly of them. Indeed. Exactly. So what you have there is uh, is your you have monogamy, but you have serial monogamy. And when you compare sure. all the 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 problems of breakups and divorces and so on that occur there, you could you may well ask, well, why not just allow polygamy and have something like that happen? And in some ways, it seems like the trends that we've been discussing are leading in that direction with with uh, contraception and technology and economic freedom uh, liberating people, you have, uh, you know, people don't have to stay in these, uh, like Marcus was saying, you know, two people live together, he considers them to be married. It seems like we're moving in the direction where if three people live together or whatever the number is, then that could be a marriage that works for them. Nathan, anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, no, that's all. Have a great night, guys. Thanks for the call. 855-450-FREE. So you guys have been discussing kind of the history of marriage yeah, so far and, tonight. Yeah, and the, the article is kind of wrapping up here. It's kind of talking about a little bit of the uh, science of the brain. Um, and uh, she kind of finishes up saying, one of the leading anthropologists in the field of research, Dr. Helen Fisher, has examined brain scans of couples in romantic love and those in attachment. So we're talking about two different things here. For those in romantic love, which could include an unshakable crush, their systems are flooded with the feel-good chemicals dopamine and norepinephrine. I'm not sure if I'm saying that one correctly. Probably not. Don't Uh, worry about it. Their addiction centers are activated in the same way as addicts craving crack cocaine. (laughs) It is this delusional state in which we make outlandish promises such as, till death do us part. Uh, For those in deeper love or attachment... They emit the hormone oxytocin uh, when they see their partner. Uh, This makes them feel love, trust, and affection. But alas, the urge to rip their clothes off fades along with the dopamine. So a lot of this has to do with, uh, you know, the spot at which you are in the relationship and the chemicals that are going on inside your brain. Uh, I don't think you can uh, keep a rela- it's, it. I would think it would be a very special relationship uh, that you could keep going without sort of keeping that, um, attempting to keep the romantic fires going. Oh, I right? think any good relationship takes uh, effort, right? Like you have to put some effort into whatever it is to keep things good, right? So, I mean, you, you can't just sit back and like, hey, bring me some cherries, you know? I'm gonna- <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd rather watch TV than have sex. <laughs> mm. You know, this right, if you say that 
enough times yeah. in a row, yeah. you don't have a relationship anymore. Yeah, I I, I think so. Uh, so it's interesting here. Um, the uh, the author says that uh, part of my research took me undercover on a marital affair website. Uh, donning a fake wedding ring, I met men who were deliberately seeking affairs. I lo- this is the Ashley Madison. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a there's a company out there that sells mm-hmm. supposedly extramarital oh, affairs. Okay. I, uh, it's got to be full of dudes uh, and call uh, girls. I would think so. Well, she says she. I loathe their deceitfulness, but I learned a lot. Without exception, every man made it clear that they still love their wife and valued the security of family life, but needed an outlet for romantic frisson. Uh, it wasn't sex they were seeking. They described wanting to feel excited about seeing someone again and wanting to get to mm. know someone and have a conversation that's not about the house and the kids. Um, so that's pretty much what do the, you know. People want variety. Right. In life. Yeah, I wonder. I would imagine they have a website for men for this because women don't need that website if they right. want some extra. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just kind of how that goes. It's easy to uh, it's easy to have disdain for people who are. You know, looking for something outside of the relationship, but yeah, know. I mean, she does say none of the evidence above provides an excuse for such blatant deceit, but it does give us cause to rethink the needless demands we place on long term relationships. Surely we can afford to relax a 24 7 clause in the commitment contract. Uh, we're lucky to live in an era uh, that allows us to enjoy romantic relationships rather than le- uh, lean on them, and uh, the only way we can achieve enduring love in our self focused opportunistic society is to adapt our relationship values accordingly not stubbornly cling to a fairy tale ideal that I, belongs I tend to, agree to with, once upon a time with this uh you know this interpretation or these ideas because i think that you look at monogamous relationships and the cheating that is rampant uh, within those monogamous, supposedly monogamous relationships, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think is evidence of what this person or whoever it is the author is here is is suggesting is that is people are looking for variety and they're just not being honest with one another about it. If they could be honest, if partners could be honest with one another, then I think that would lead to a stronger long-term you know, main relationship. I agree. Uh, honesty is uh, very important in a good relationship. Problem has been uh, in the relationships where I've had uh, experience with so called open relationships, uh, the honesty just hasn't been there. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You take control, share your experience. Maybe you are a polygamist or polyamorist. Everybody wants to know. What can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 you can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves. Maybe you are a polyamorous. That was the word I was looking for as we were going out to the break in the last segment. Maybe you want to explain your experience. Has it been a nightmare? Or has it been just this, you know, wonderful thing that you've always been waiting to uh, to find that you can't understand why people would be monogamous and you've been polyamorous for so long and it's been so great? Or maybe it's been a mix. Maybe you've had some really great, uh, great polyamorous relationships and you've had some really bad ones, which were learning experiences, which led you to uh, the great polyamorous experience. Maybe you want to share your thoughts with us, 855 450 free. That is the Pro XPN toll free line. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three, and we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So I heard that earlier there were some callers from Manchester who were kind of talking about some of the things going on in Manchester, but didn't really come right out and talk about what happened today. Is that true? I There were some callers. I wasn't exactly sure uh, who was involved in what, so I mm-hmm. t- attempted to ask questions to get them to sort of bring out the what I thought to be the most important part of the activism that went on today was um, that didn't get said. So, so you guys didn't talk about it, what it was actually what no. has actually happened today. Well, no. we, what we talked about, I mean, I wasn't really involved too much, <clears throat> but basically what the callers called to say was that they went out uh, handing out newspapers, uh, mm-hmm. the FPP newspaper at the airport and at the police station. The and free, that's, that's free Patriot what, Press. Oh, right. Um, that's what they talked about. I think he changed his name to something else. Uh, okay. But I always forget what, what it is. I always remember FPP.cc, but the, the rest of it. He's done a good job of branding that. So um, so nobody mentioned that the people handing out, or that one of the people handing out newspapers at the Manchester airport had a rifle strapped to his back. That was not mentioned. That was not mentioned. Wow. I mean, that, that seems to me to be the most relevant part of the story. I thought it was really newsworthy today when I saw a picture hit Facebook of uh, Liberty Carrots, one of the activists from Manchester, who frequently is seen in a carrot outfit, so it is an accurate name for him. Um, he was not in a carrot outfit today. If you would like to see the picture, I did post it earlier to Free, Free Talk Live's Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, but you can also go to freekeen.com. It's the second story down at the moment. And you can see a picture of him, and there were actually multiple pictures, but those didn't come till later. Um, there's actually one of him being very silly in front of a moose, and so there's a variety of different. Like in the New Hampshire airport, there's actually a life-size depiction of a moose in yeah, the made airport, of like rusty scrap metal. 
And uh, so they had some fun today. Uh, they spent about 45 minutes, apparently. So this wasn't some sort of in and out quick photo op thing. They were actually inside the airport handing out uh, handing out newspapers to people, liberty oriented newspapers to to passengers and uh, people that were there to pick pick loved ones up, that sort of thing. Uh, handing out these papers for 45 minutes. Apparently, the police were following them around, and they they did have some interactions with the police, which apparently were videotaped and or videoed, and they will be available at some point. I imagine we'll be seeing them at freekeen.com when they are available. But if you want to see the picture of a guy standing, literally, he's maybe. A hundred feet away from the beginning of the TSA checkpoint. He is within sight of the TSA checkpoint uh, at the Manchester airport. And he's with holding a some rifle. kind of old rifle, right? Like a most He's not holding the rifle. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's strapped to his back. Right. It's strapped to his back. If you were holding it, that would probably be a brandishing charge or yeah. a menacing charge. Uh, but in this case, it is strapped to his back. And he is holding a stack of newspapers. He's waving. He's wearing a tri corner hat. And I just thought this was a lot of fun. I thought this was a a ballsy piece of activism that is going to be shocking to a lot of people who are going to look at this and say— It's going to be shocking. Wow. Wait wait a minute. What? A man with a rifle strapped to his back is allowed into an airport? And even— I, even I was a little bit surprised by this, even knowing that you know we're here in New Hampshire and things. Are you surprised? Are, Do you think it's good activism? I think it's great activism, okay. absolutely. And, you know, and and I think it's in along the line of a long, great line of uh, Man- Manchester Airport activism, including don't uh, don't strip our rights, which happened with Derek J and Kelly uh, a couple years ago, where they went in and they stripped down to their underwear, basically, and uh, or bathing suits, essentially, and they uh, were there and handing out information to people and smiling and taking pictures in the in the airport. Uh, Russell Canning, of course, back in 2005, was arrested for attempting to board an airline with only a Bible. He was wearing clothes, but he was only carrying a Bible and a copy of the Declaration of Independence. He didn't actually have any identification on him. He was arrested in that particular case. So we've had a lot of interesting airport uh, activism, and I think this is uh, definitely a good follow-up. I think one has to be extraordinarily careful with the gun activism, mm-hmm. um, and because it's, uh, you know, it's this kind Kind of issue where you know people get sort of upset about it now let's consider for a second the airport airports across the country are full of people with guns yes they the, are those people are wearing government uniforms mm-hmm. those pe- people commit crimes they do everything that uh, all the rest of them do this guy with this old rifle and a tri-corner hat is highly unlikely to commit any crime he's clearly there for some kind of activism of some sort I do think that one needs to be careful. I don't have any particular critique of this uh, this this activism. I just I'm like eh, you know I always get a little skittish around gun activism. I think it's ridiculous because I think mostly if you're going to carry a gun, you should carry it concealed. That's what I think. But the problem with concealed carry laws is is that even if you sh- if you like bend over and your gun shows, then it's like a crime. Now, that's ridiculous. I don't think it should be a crime that your gun shows. I just think that, eh, you know, if you're going to carry on. a gun. Wait, why would it be a crime? In New Hampshire? No, not in New Hampshire. Okay. But in many states. <laughs> We're talking states- about New Hampshire where things are completely different compared to a lot of other states. I don't imagine carrying a gun into an airport in most states is going to go very well at all. I no, I wouldn't think so. Think so. Yeah. So that's what to me was really so interesting about this case was the contrast that people will experience. Uh, There are people in places like California and New York who they can't even imagine this. No, I'm not exaggerating. What it reminds me of is a few years back, uh, I think it was Barack Obama came around and uh, one person had a, a gun with them, you know, open carrying a gun. In New Hampshire? Yeah, in New Hampshire. It was William Kostrick. He's a Manchester activist. Right. And uh, Barack Obama and the news freaked out, right? Because the mm-hmm. news people were not from New Hampshire. Right. Because it was Obama. They came in from Massachusetts and wherever else, and they just couldn't believe that there was somebody with a gun in sight. I mean, the president is coming. You we're can't all going to a- die. <laughs> right? It's yeah. a murderer. And the news made such a big deal out of it. And he's like, and, you know, William just was like cool as could be. He got on CNN, yeah, actually. Yeah, he did. He I, he was on with uh, whatever that blowhard's Hardball name is. Hardball guy? Yeah, yeah. Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews. Yeah. And that is a hilarious clip if you look it up on YouTube. Um, yeah, I guess look for well, Chris Matthews. And, and this is yeah. one of the things that I'm yep. pointing out. Now, I this was years ago. The activism in New Hampshire wasn't as mature as it is today. But one of the things that he William Kostrick did is he grabbed a sign that said something to the effect of, um, you know, that the, the Tree of Liberty needs 
needs to be watered, mm. which is, you know, what is it watered with? Well, according to the quote, the blood of patriots and, and tyrants. <laughs> yeah, not, so, may, maybe not a great yeah, right, sign to yes. hold when you've got a gun. So maybe this wasn't the right sign to have out there while you have a gun strapped to your hip. Like Maybe, maybe it was the right sign. It got him on television. It, But to say what? To talk about how I don't remember the content of the interview, but to make the points that he was making about the freedom he, to carry well, in I New Hampshire, basically had to to back off of the the sign that you know he's like, oh well, you know, I just grabbed a sign from the stack. What did he say that? I don't I, yeah, he he more or less did say that, and I think Mark makes a, a valid point. I mean, it was it was very very interesting, and he did really great when he was on Chris Matthews. Um, because, but it was just the contrast of the media was just freaking mm-hmm. out, you know, because they live in a different world, yes. basically. They don't live in New Hampshire. Right. Well, <laughs> and and the, the, what's funny is, is that if you wear the right costume, it doesn't matter. Right. And you can wear a security guard costume and have a gun on and nobody's going to have a problem. Mm-hmm. Now, it takes nothing to be a security guard. I, the first job I had when I got out of prison <laughs> for not eight and a half years for second degree murder was security. Now, okay. I didn't have a gun or anything like that, but they certainly could have given me a uniform, and if I would have strapped a gun on, nobody would have thought the first thing about it, because it's not... It, people are conditioned that if you wear sure. the right sort of clothing that you can have a gun with that clothing. If this isn't dress-up, people... Well, you know. <laughs> that's the class, right? The the, the uniform it, uh, denotes a separate class it's of person. It's the warrior class. It's the class that's allowed to carry the gun, right? So, And people have become very accustomed to that. Well, and, he's got a tri-corner hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He looks like he belongs in Williamsburg, like reenacting something right, with that this, corner hat. The way he hat. looks in this costume... Costume, this, this We're rifle about today, the rifleman in yes. Manchester. Yeah, the, the way the rifleman today in New Hampshire, uh, we should post that on Free Talk Live um, so that uh, folks. I'll can... repost it. I posted it earlier today. Oh, that's right. Um, it, he, it looks like this rifle could just be a replica. I mean, the way he's dressed, mm. you know, he just looks like a Minuteman. That's all. So share your thoughts, if you'd like, on the man with the rifle in the airport here on Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. I thought it was great. I do wish activism. I knew what kind of gun it was. I thought this was great. It most, it's a Mosin, apparently. It's a Mosin the God? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what the type of Mosin. Is there, is there more than one? I, I thought I that was uh, what you called them all. Like, uh, people are very excited about them. Expert, They're cheap. So. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Rifle in the airport. We will uh, continue. You can bring up anything that happens to be on your mind and take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Hey, this is Guy Fieri. Now, when your recipe calls for red peppers, chili powder, garlic, and onions, you got the start of some awesome chili and maybe some heartburn. If that's the case, roll out the Rolaids liquid. Don't let heartburn keep you from enjoying the things you love. New Rolaids liquid gets you back in the action fast. Even when your worst heartburn symptoms flare up, Rolaids liquid dual active formula coats and soothes for rapid relief. New Rolaids liquid in your choice of mint or cherry. Use as directed. R-O-L-A-I-D-S? Now that's how you spell relief. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Thursday, March 20th, 2014. Radio VR News. There's a possible development in the search for that missing Malaysian jetliner that has kept the world baffled. Ed Donahue reports on what satellites have detected in the Indian Ocean. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott says it's credible information, but warns not to jump to any conclusions. The Australian Maritime Safety Authority has received information based on satellite imagery of objects possibly related to the search. And John Young with the Maritime Safety Authority says the objects may not be related to the aircraft. The image is in the vicinity of the search area defined and searched in the past two days. The search for the jet has been punctuated by several false leads since it disappeared March 8th above the Gulf of Thailand. I'm Ed Donahue. Despite the war of words with Russia, President Obama is ruling out any U.S. military involvement in Ukraine. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander has the latest. The administration is reiterating the sanctions it imposed against Russia for its actions in Ukraine are just the start. This is Press Secretary Jay Carney. You can expect that more action will be taken. In an interview with NBC7 San Diego, the president says the ratcheting up of the pressure does not include getting into what he called a military excursion in Ukraine. I think even the Ukrainians would acknowledge that uh, you know, for us to engage Russia militarily, uh, would uh, would not be appropriate. The administration has so far not provided Ukraine with any military equipment. Jerry Bodlander, Washington. Top government intelligence lawyers are telling the Federal Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board that Congress is adequately monitoring U.S. surveillance programs, but not everyone is convinced. Correspondent Jackie Quinn has more. The General Counsel for the Director of National Intelligence says they've set the balance between public disclosure and secrecy by empowering the intelligence committees in Congress. But it's an awkward claim, since the Senate Intelligence Committee chairwoman is accusing the CIA of illegally monitoring Senate investigators carrying out their oversight duties. Some lawmakers say there would be constitutional implications if Congress is blocked from oversight, since the Obama administration justifies its intelligence programs by saying all three branches of government are involved. Jackie Quinn, Washington. Toyota is admitting it misled consumers about safety problems and has agreed to a huge financial settlement. Correspondent Diane Cupley reports on what Attorney General Eric Holder had to say about how Toyota handled the issue. Put simply, Toyota's conduct was shameful. After a four-year investigation, Attorney General Eric Holder says Toyota admits to putting public relations ahead of informing the public about the safety problems with its vehicles. It protected its brand ahead of its own customers. This is what's in the settlement. Toyota will fully admit wrongdoing. It will pay a financial penalty of $1.2 billion dollars. Toyota officials say this is a major step toward putting what they call an unfortunate chapter behind them, and they say they're committed to rebuilding trust with consumers. Diane Kepley, Washington. In health news, correspondent Jennifer Kelleher reports Hawaii's attorney general is suing the manufacturers and distributors of the blood thinner Plavix. The reason? It appears not to work on Pacific Islanders. His lawsuit argues that the manufacturers of Plavix didn't disclose that the drug has a diminished or no effect on people of East Asian or Pacific Islander descent. That's problematic because a, a significant portion of Hawaii's population is of that ancestry. A new analysis published in the New England Journal of Medicine argues almost half of Americans ages 40 to 75 should be taking statin drugs to lower their cholesterol. But as correspondent Jackie Quinn reports, some are skeptical of the claim. A Duke University study says if 25 million more people ages 40 to 75 were using statins, nearly half a million heart attacks and strokes could be prevented in one decade. The study is the first independent look at new guidelines issued by the American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology. They give a new formula to estimate risk, which includes blood pressure, smoking status, and factors beyond cholesterol levels. And they're personalized by race and gender. While supporters say the numbers show the true scope of heart risk in America, critics say that the guidelines are overreaching. I'm Jackie Quinn. 
And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Following today's press conference in which NASA announced its continuing search for a planet capable of supporting NASA, researcher Dr. Kenneth Heiser sat down with Onion reporters to detail their ongoing mission to find a NASA habitable planet. Our objective is to find a planet capable of nurturing not just life, but also a sustained interest in the exploration of the cosmos. Uh, such a planet would need to have water and proximity to light and heat, but also life forms with even the vaguest understanding of the importance of astronomical exploration. Ultimately, this would need to be a planet with organisms that have a genuine interest in expanding the limits of their knowledge. Heiser added that any planet capable of supporting NASA would need to be able to generate a steady stream of financing to meet the agency's $18 billion annual budget. The important thing is we just need to be patient. There's a limitless number of planets in the universe and eventually we'll find one with the resources to support our work. We just have to, right? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Whether you want to talk about marriage, that was kind of the discussion for the bulk of the show tonight, but also a man with a rifle at the Manchester airport uh, stirred up, well, not much of anything. The police followed him around. He was in the airport for around 45 minutes with a rifle strapped to his back, handing out newspapers, being friendly, smiling, waving at people. Uh, and just having a good time. And there were some other activists there with him, including Robert Mathias, one of the newer movers to New Hampshire. Uh, he moved from uh, from Chicago, actually, which is kind of a big change. He's living in the Manchester area, and he is the newest blogger over at freekeen.com. So I was grateful uh, to have him on board because he's really seems like a real doer as far as creating media. Uh, so you can talk about the you know the issue of carrying weapons around. In fact, that's kind of where we're going next uh, com to, to compare and contrast the difference between how a man with a gun is perceived in New Hampshire versus a place like Connecticut. Mm, now, yeah. Now I I know a guy who moved from Connecticut who is uh, somebody who's you know just likes uh, guns, right? Like he's somebody mm -hmm. who uh, I guess must own a gun or two <clears throat> and just enjoys uh, gun ownership. But uh, boy, he does not talk very highly of Connecticut, and I've seen some stories. I mean, it's just brutal there. It seems like. Yeah, well, of course, they just put the legislation through recently that uh, we talked about kind of around the turn of the, the year, the new year, where they were demanding that people line up and there were lines that were running very long outside mm, of government yes. offices, like long lines of gun owners who were coming to voluntarily report the ownership of certain firearms to the Connecticut government. Yeah. Uh, because of this new restrictions that were passed and kind of the, the hubbub after the school shooting from over a year ago at this point. Yeah. Um, and Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, yeah. But there have been, um, you know, there's there's other school shootings that have gone on around America. Sure, but that was the real yeah. uh, justification for doing it in Connecticut, passing the, yeah. the new laws there. And so uh, yeah, I guess supposedly there have been some people who have not Co cooperated. They have not turned in their firearms and or registered their firearms with the Connecticut state government. But nonetheless, there's that's, that's kind of one indicator of how people will freak out in a place like Connecticut about sure. firearms. And in the story we're about to tell you from New Britain, Connecticut, uh, Central Connecticut State University, this one isn't even really about a firearm of any meaningful note. Yeah, the perp in this story does have a BB gun with him, but nothing that you could do any real significant damage with. He also allegedly had a plastic sword, or what is alleged to by others have been a real samurai sword. Don't know what the real story is, but what happened, according to WFSB, is a lockdown of the Central Connecticut State University campus and they brought in something around 70 police officers, 65, 70 police officers, somewhere in there, to put a stop to this man. Now, this happened back in November of 2013. He's a student on the campus. He, it was uh, the very beginning of November, so it was right after the Halloween weekend. 
he had come onto campus still dressed as a ninja, which was his Halloween costume. He apparently had the samurai sword and the BB gun as part of his uh, costume. So that was why he was wearing these things. Well, the sword makes sense, but I don't know about a BB gun. A, a real ninja wouldn't carry a BB gun. He's not really a ninja as much as like a mall ninja, uh, right? Like just some, some guy dressed up in tactical gear uh, for Halloween, which um, I've got to say, Halloween was on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. So this was a Tuesday? I believe it was, yeah. So we're talking about November the 4th. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so he's really into Halloween. He wanted to kind of stick to it. He was out it. on a Paul all weekend bender. I read this same article. Yeah. The dude had not been home, and he's in the clothes he was wearing on Tuesday. He's in, still in the clothes he was wearing on. He's the, just in the spirit from the Thursday. He's, he's some kind of maniac. Well, that's going to make a good story, you know? I mean, that, that, those are the kind of trips that really make a good story later yeah, on. That's what it is. It's a trip. <laughs> While CCSU, the. Uh, Central Connecticut State University officials and its police department are still tallying totals on campus. The New Britain Police Department says its costs or its efforts cost more than $13,000. And they think that the suspect in this case, David Kim, should pay that total. So because the police overreacted and sent out literally their entire squad plus different cops from other areas, they had to bring in police from surrounding towns for this, because the police reacted in this way, they say they think that this man who wore a Halloween costume to school should be paying for the to foot the bill. <laughs> talk, this, about, talk about blaming the victim, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, this guy's the victim. I don't know that I agree necessarily. Now, I'm not sure what this guy should have to pay, but I think that this guy should he have to pay anything for. He went to school with a pl allegedly a plastic sword. Well, you don't know what this, whether the sword was plastic or not. We don't, we don't have any pictures of the sword. The evidence is not on display. And let me ask you this: It's alleged that his father said that it was a plastic sword. Okay, let let me ask let me ask you this: If a person has a say a replica AR-15 that they mm -hmm. don't have uh, that they're not carrying around on their back, they're actually holding it in their hands. The sword was carried on his back, at least in the the picture from the elevator. Let's not forget that there was a handgun on his uh, hip. I don't know where the gun it's was. It's a hip. Yes, okay. that's where it's at. So it's a BB gun, and I've got mm -hmm. one of these BB guns, and you can't tell the difference unless you're looking right down the barrel yeah. of this thing whether or not this is it's a 45 or a BB gun or a, a .22 So why BB weren't you a moment ago advocating for Liberty Carrots to uh, pay the cost of the police response? Okay. Are you saying that anybody who shows up with a gun somewhere should pay the cost if the police freak out? Nope. Um, I think that if you go to a place where it is sort of, this is a state place, and it guns are outlawed. So is the airport. Yep. The guns are outlawed, like basically in Connecticut, and mm -hmm. certainly at their universities. Now, I don't know, but this guy's got to be responsible. Do you believe in peace, freedom, and personal responsibility? Because this guy was acting in an extraordinarily... An irresponsible fashion. He's wearing his clothes from Thursday, um, his uh, Halloween outfit that he rode, uh, wore the whole bender, um, a mm -hmm. replica firearm, and apparently a uh, a ninja sword. And he comes into school. Yeah, I, I can see so why think, school considers that to be a threat. What do you think, Marcus? Is, uh, is Mark overreacting here? Like the police? <laughs> well, I, I think Mark's just trying to bring a balanced uh, viewpoint, a different viewpoint, right? To say, like, look, if somebody shows up at, a, my at a school <laughs> that, you know, with that that's dressed in a, you know, a different way and they're carrying what seems to be weapons, that, that's cause for concern for people. And if I it, would agree. Is that it cause it, for 70 police to come out? And, uh, no. If it was a replica no. AR-15 and he had a balaclava on. <laughs> now, he's only, a sh he's only a step shy of this, Ian. He's got a ninja sword on his back. Yeah. He's carrying a firearm on his hip. Now, he's not a real firearm, but it might as well be as far as they're concerned. I mean, if he's skulking, if he's, you know, behind, hiding behind corners <laughs> and, you know, running from corner to corner with an AR-15 with a balaclava on, is he then responsible for his actions for the police being called out? Well, if you're is brandishing there a weapon, then that's one thing. Well, is there anything that he can do that he should be responsible yeah, like, for the police? Yeah, like how about threatening someone? I'm not done for the police coming out. Is there anything? He can How do. about threat actually threatening okay. someone? Okay, rather so, than having a costume on and walking around with a sword. But do you understand how in on strapped to his back? Yep. Do you understand how the laws in a particular place can affect what a threat is like there? See, in 
Connecticut, no one expects to see a civilian, especially one dressed like a mall ninja. Uh, with so what you're saying is on. if you live in Connecticut, you should be against what this guy did. But if you're in New Hampshire, you should be OK. In with New it. Hampshire, because our you know, because the laws laws to some extent create culture. And because mm-hmm. our culture here is a more of a gun culture, so you are excusing it's the police. Kind of funny. Well, what, what what are you? Am I excusing? Are what? you excusing the police for their behavior in this well, case? Well, I don't. What's know an appropriate ex- response? If you think this guy was out of line, I what's saw an the, appropriate. I response? saw the police and how they did the lockdown mm-hmm. and how they treated students in this lockdown, and I didn't like what I saw. Okay. However. I think that some of that responsibility falls on Mr. Kim here and his— uh, So he's responsible for how the police reacted? I That's said ridiculous. Some of the responsibility falls on Mr. How much Kim. should he have to pay for? I, I don't know exactly, and okay. I think that's an excellent question. Well, let's find out what you think. But I think you he's lucky he's us. not sitting in a jail cell. 855, I think it's probably because he got bailed out. Uh, 855, 450 free. We'll get to the details on the story here because we've only been sort of— Talking about the generics, uh, 855-450-3733. He has pleaded not guilty in this case, by the way. That's a recent development to the story. There's more coming up. You can take control and share your thoughts. Did the police overreact? We'll tell you more. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I signed up for the Free State Project, I was excited by the prospect of moving somewhere with other people that had liberty as a goal. When I got here to New Hampshire, I was stunned by the great weather and the natural beauty. 
The Free State Project is helping to move liberty forward. Want to be involved? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. That's freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up whatever you want toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm, so feel free to chime in, if you, especially if you want to add to the discussion about this college student who is facing charges for bringing a, a allegedly plastic sword, some are alleging it was a real sword, uh, also, BB gun apparently, maybe a knife to school as part of his Halloween costume. They went after him with dozens of officers, some uniformed, some SWAT team, some ununiformed. They really brought in every cop they could for this. And there's a very kind of scary video, which I just posted to our social media, Facebook, Google+, Twitter. You're welcome to take a look. It's one student's perspective going from being in his dorm room, just hanging out, to... Fatigue wearing police, presumably, coming into his dorm room and holding people at gunpoint, demanding they leave the room, going down the stairwell, several flights on each flight. They uh, were holding them at gunpoint. They, they like Bushmasters, and they were holding these guys at gunpoint. Um, it's not like it would be the first time that somebody's been accidentally shot. Uh, and and I, I really think this is... I don't like this part about the the whole police state we've moved into. And, and when they're ushering them out, as Ian was just saying, I mean, as they're going down the stairs, there's a you know, there's a guy at like every, every level. Level. There's, yeah, there's a guy. 60, I mean, there's, you know, there, there's like sixty everywhere. cops. Yeah. So we can get back into that. You're welcome to share your thoughts at eight fifty five four fifty free. Uh, so imagine being able to spend your bitcoins with a credit card through a completely decentralized non bank system. This would be phenomenal, and this is what's going to – this idea, whether it's mybtc.cc or not, um, is the idea that is going to bring Bitcoins really into the meat space. This is what's going to change it for everybody. The the thing that's wonderful about mybtc.cc, their Bitcoin, uh, their Bitcoin credit card, is that – they're not going through banks. There's no centralization um, with it. There's very little trust involved in their system. So this is essentially the Bitcoin of credit cards, too. It's decentralized like credit, like Bitcoins are, and that's the reason I'm behind my BTC.cc. That's the reason that I ordered my credit card. And I, that's the reason I, if you've got a business you know, just anybody, I recommend ordering their credit card. But if you've got a business, I recommend, you know, just do the reprogramming that it takes to get your swipe card to take these mybtc.cc credit cards. And then you could be the first one in your area to accept Bitcoins through credit card. I think this is going to be the wave of the future for Bitcoins in, the, you know, this year, this year, the end of this year, beginning of next. That's when this is going to really take off. And uh, you could be at the start of it. MyBTC.cc. Get involved in the Indiegogo campaign like I have. All right. So you can take control of the airway, uh, airwaves here at 855 free. we have got more details on this story, but let's go first to Jerry in West Virginia. Jerry, you're on Free Talk Live listening to WVTS. Good day. Hey there. Uh, West Virginia has a open carry law. You can carry a gun anywhere within reason mm-hmm. as long as it's in the open. But Generally, the open carry laws that. do not apply on college campuses uh, in most places. I don't know what it's no, like no. in West Virginia. No. Uh, he's a moron. <laughs> 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 You know, you go to extremes, extreme things are going to happen. Yeah, it does extreme seem like an extreme stuff. thing. You don't think that the well, police response in this case, calling in 70 officers, uh, going little, room to room, 
searching. What do they do, though? They don't know exactly what happened. All they've got is a guy. I don't know. In, investigate. In do guy, some police work. Try to learn many, something. Many, that's what they did. That's what they did at Columbine, and people were being shot on the inside. That's and you've not got, true. That's what the exactly hell are you talking true. about? They were standing out in the parking lot trying to ascertain as to what was going on. They were standing in the parking lot because they're cowards. But somebody at Columbine inside would have had a gun to begin with. All that could have been stopped. That's certainly true. I agree with you there, Jerry. Anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, well, I did, but you took my mind off of it. But, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh the, Spit the it response out. was a little, a little overly. They, should, they could have sent two officers down to investigate, and if they didn't back That's up, right. Them. They could have investigated a call of a man with a gun on campus rather than doing a room to room search and holding everybody at gunpoint, bringing the bear cat in, rolling in every single troop cop from around the area. Thank you, Jerry, for your call tonight. I appreciate it. At 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. The officers at Columbine stood outside because there were men with guns inside the school shooting people, and they didn't want to get shot because officer safety is paramount. So they stood and hid behind trees and trucks and things like that, waited until the kids killed themselves, then finally eventually went in and cleared the place. So that's what happened in Columbine. It had absolutely nothing to do with what was happening at this school. No one had been shot. No one had been menaced in any way. There were some calls. Let me get to the story from WFSB.com. The uh, CCSU officials and the police, uh, the police specifically, are saying that the suspect in this case, David Kim, should pay for what the police did, their overreaction. Kim, who is no longer a CCSU student, went to a Halloween party at the University of Connecticut where he dressed as a ninja during the weekend of November 2nd. However, Kim did not bring a change of clothes with him and took a bus back to the campus, still wearing his ninja costume on November 4th. Police said Kim was running on campus shortly after he got off the bus. He told the police he was late for a class, so he had decided to run to it. Some students became alarmed and called police about a suspicious person with what appeared to be a gun and a sword. Recently released 911 calls show that people even followed Kim as he proceeded on his way to James Hall, where he lived. The calls caused school officials to declare a campus-wide emergency, where students and staff were told to shelter in place, lock doors, and stay away from the windows. Police said they used uh, security footage and information from a card swipe system to identify Kim. They then conducted a floor-by-floor search of James Hall. Nearly three and a half hours later, the all-clear was given. Students and staff were then free to move about the campus. State police sent 70 men and women to that initial call where they were joining local officers from West Hartford, Newington, and New Britain. So I'm sorry. Uh, It was 70 state police plus officers from West Hartford, Newington, and New Britain. So I'm going to guess at least 100 officers in total. Uh, The state police helicopter uh, was flown out for this as well as... The Federal Bureau of Investigation has uh, swarmed the hundred. They, they swarmed the 182-acre campus to ensure the students' safety. Even though not one person was threatened or harmed in any way. Now I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that likely uh, that this overreaction is due in part to the uh, awareness of these other school shootings that have happened. Yeah, I that mean, seems th- obvious. That that is what this overreaction about. It, it's not about the call. It's about these other school shootings that have happened, and they're like, look, we don't want to be the ones who underreact, so we're going to overreact. And that, I think, is what this is about. Yeah, I don't think that the, um, you know, like, and this is what you're referring to here, sort of the general culture of the the nation or a particular place. So, for one, you're talking about Connecticut, which is much closer to Sandy, this, this place being much closer to Sandy Hook than we are, or most of the people listening. When we were kids, we ran around with guns, and it, they, they looked as realistic as they possibly could be. But this kid isn't a kid. He's a college student, and, you know, he happens to be the age that a lot of shooters might be. Well, let's come back, and we can talk more about the cultural aspect of this uh, here in a moment, because that's been touched on a couple times. We haven't really dug into it. Plus, a little bit more about what actually happened and what's happening next. It's Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. 
I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit Broadcast.LRN.FM to learn how. Broadcast.LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about the police, in my opinion, overreacting uh, to a college student who was dressed up for Halloween. He stayed in costume due to partying on the weekend, came back to school, hadn't gone home, still was wearing his costume, which included what is described by the mainstream media as a samurai sword, described by the police as that. His father allegedly said this was a plastic sword. He did apparently have a BB gun on him, maybe a knife as well. Not all those details are too clear. Uh, This did happen back in November of 2013. The case is still working. There was an update in late February 
where the young man David Kim, who actually happens to be a son of the of one of the CCSU professors there, yeah, that's gotta be a problem at this <laughs> uh, campus. It's the Central Connecticut State University, so he's got these weapons or alleged weapons on him, and it wasn't threatening anybody. He was just walking around. He was running to class hey, at one point. Running to class. I mean, in all honesty, there's nothing wrong with having a weapon. And there's nothing wrong with having a weapon at school. There uh, are rules against it, uh, though, on I college underst- campuses. And laws against it in Connecticut. I understand that, but I mean, just in on a, from a moral perspective, I don't see that there's a problem. I know when I was in, I co- when I was in college, uh, there was a BB pistol uh, going around the floor, and people were using it to shoot little darts at a dartboard. Oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and you can see how the world's changed. I agree with you that an individual, a, a person has the right to protect their life if they ha- and they have the right to build tools. Yeah. If they have and they have the right to do business with people. So therefore, a person has a right to purchase a tool to protect themselves with. And I don't have any, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, I don't have any disagreement with that. However, I do have a problem with um, essentially private property, which many people can, cons- you know, when you think of public property, it's administered by individuals and it's it's basically private property owned by the government, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the way it is today. They've got rules and if you don't abide by those rules, bad things are going to happen. This guy was a, what seems like was in a very was in a state where he was making poor judgments or he was just so busy he wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. But he he went onto a school dressed in tactical gear, running with a, what appeared to be a firearm in his hip and a uh, a sword, which has killed more people than a handguns. Mind the way, by the way, a ninja sword on his back. You mean like historically? Historically, well, it's yeah. been around longer, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, it's had a lot of time. Swords are deadly, though. That's what I'm saying about a. a, a he's carrying a, um, a a katana here, and it's a deadly thing. So I are can, baseball bats. Though. I can yeah. cleave you d- like halfway through the middle. Can you? With a with a katana, yeah, absolutely. I've seen guys on. Uh, no, but can you? I think I can. <laughs> if you hold still. <laughs> all right, all right. So let me give you a little bit more, a little bit more about the story, and then your calls uh, and your thoughts. Of course, you can bring up anything here at eight fifty five four fifty three. The police are saying this man, this young man, the college student, should be paying the costs of the police's overreaction. Remember, they flew in the state police helicopter called Trooper One, and they also brought in at least one Bearcat. You can actually see the Bearcat in this video when the college student makes it down however many flights of stairs and then goes outside. The Bearcat is there. Uh, The state police sent 70 men to the scene, plus officers were there from West Hartford, Newington, and New Britain. So lots of officers on the scene, uh, SWAT teams with military fatigues. Anyway, West Hartford police costs capped off at just a few hundred dollars, but state police told Eyewitness News, WFSB.com here, the source, that the approximate overtime amounts and fuel for Trooper 1 is $4,500. If you were a New Britain police officer working that day, it was all hands on deck, New Britain Police Chief James Wardwell said. All were deployed in one capacity or another. We called our next shift in early to cover the streets. The New Britain Police Department estimates its total cost was 13000 Dollars after 62 officers responded. It also cost $5,300 in overtime, $4,600 in straight time, and $2,500 accrued through the Criminal Investigation Division. Wardwell said the young man responsible for the offense should be the one paying these costs. He said, we're asking the court to request reimbursement to the city on our behalf. Kim was arrested and charged with breach of peace. Kim was arrested the next day. That isn't day much. And then charged again the next day with first-degree criminal trespass because he was informed not to return to campus until meeting with CCSU officials. So apparently he was arrested the day of, told not to go back to campus, and then did, and then charged with criminal trespass at that point. Okay. The New Britain state attorney said they can't comment on the police department request because the case is still open in criminal court. Uh, Kim did not comment at that time to the media, and there is an update on the case. We'll give you that here in a moment. But first... We go to you and your thoughts. Jim Bob is calling from Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Marcus and Mark. Hey, Jim Bob. Hi. Howdy. Hey, you're on Jim the air. Bob. To call 45. My malt liquor shot down, Miss Fine away at you. Hey, uh, I think we all can agree with the uh, authorities overreacted, and I think that the commander of those 70 officers or whatever, how many precinct chiefs there are involved, should all be put under suspension for acting stupidly, just as the kid 
who, like one of your hosts mentioned, is entirely correct. Nobody knew that was a BB gun, and everybody had in their right mind would have even thought it might be a real gun, because as we know, there are 20, young 20-something-year-old kids that go to school sometimes and do unload firearms at school to the detriment of civil society. So my point is that kid should be kicked out of school. He should certainly, a $4,500 fine sounds reasonable. They shouldn't have to fine it by 70. Let me ask you this. Uh, um, but, what if what if the school, hand, this is what I'm, I'm coming up with on my own. Let me ask you this, if, you, if this is acceptable to you. If the school handles the punishment, and this kid has to do, I don't know, the equivalent of knocking out erasers every day for the rest of the school year. Or right something. on the chalkboard, I will not, not, not bring that samurai that's, swords. That's busy work. The fact is, erasers do need to be knocked out. Um, you know, I don't think there's any point in just wasting somebody's time, but he, he caused a lot of problems for people, and I do think that there's some kind of restitution that can be made. He I didn't think, cause any right. problem, Mark. Stop blaming the victim. All he did was Bring not a, a victim. He brought a costume to school. The people who caused the problems were the police by shutting down the entire he was not school. not a victim of anything. Wait a second. May I weigh in here because I've heard that he's Please. not a victim? He's the proximate cause of the whole incident in itself. He's stupid. You should actually have to, like, if I drove my car into a, 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 a water, a, a road overflowing with water, in like Arizona where I live where there's flat roads and then the word get and there's dips in the roads and we have flash flooding. If I drive my car in there and get stuck, I should that's a criminal offense for being stupid. This kid is getting off easy. He's lucky he didn't get shot, for one thing, and he's one hundred percent responsible for the incident. Blaming the, the victim, Jim Bob. Like I said, the cops should be in trouble too. The cops that were in charge of sending out seventy officers, they should be in trouble too for being stupid. They shouldn't even so wait, who's responsible for the 70 officers coming out? Are you saying it was the student or the I'm police? Blaming two people, two, I'm blaming two groups of people, the commanding officer in charge and the kids. What would you have seen stupid. happen? If you were in charge of, if you were the commanding officer, what would you have done? Well, if I were the mayor of the city, I'd fire the commander in chief. That's not what I asked. Officer. What would you do if you were the commanding officer? Uh, I'd react appropriately to a kid on campus with a gun. And, and what is an appropriate said, reaction? Certainly, uh, a small band of cops, armed uh, warriors. What do you what do you call them? Armed warriors. Yes, yeah, of course team? they have to go to the campus. But sending seventy officers is outrageous. I mean, but I, then I, again, the kid. I I kind of agree with what Jim Bob's saying. I mean, I think this was a complete overreaction. But at the same time, I mean, you know, if there's a report of somebody with a gun at the school, send cops out. I mean, you're not going to not send cops to where there's a guy with a gun at the school. I mean, the cops don't know. They're just getting the call from somebody. Jim Bob, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. 855 450 free. I think in hindsight that it would have been really great if two police officers had gone down after him, but they didn't know that this was a guy in a Halloween outfit. And I think that that's really the problem here. Um, they also didn't have any evidence that anything violent was happening. No, they didn't, but you do have somebody who's of the age of a shooter with a gun running on a campus. Mm -hmm. And I think that. So that, are you making excuses for them calling out this many people? I think that that's too many people, Ian, but I mean, How about I the helicopter? See should I they have called see, the helicopter in? I can see why they do this thing because it's they, they, they sure they want to make the overtime. No, 855, that's not just 450 free. They want to look like heroes, like they were doing something for someone, but no one needed this response. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor Starter Kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. Self-reliance. Survival supplies. Survival skills. 
national experts. Get it all at the only free-to-attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must-be-there event. Presented by American Living, this massive expo will include special guests. David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers. Plus, GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Here, Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network, along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here toll free, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And that is the Pro XPN toll free line. You can also join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site there. We have a Bitcoin tip jar for those of you who'd like to contribute Bitcoin to Free Talk Live to our operations here. Uh, you can do that by dropping your Bitcoins in over at bitcoin.freetalklive.com. There's a little Bitcoin widget there that you can use, or you can just copy our address and use that uh, if you prefer that. But if you've got blockchain.info, it makes it easy to send and receive Bitcoins. Send them to wherever you want, anywhere around the world, and receive them from all around the world at uh, next to zero cost. I mean, it doesn't cost very much money to send a Bitcoin transaction. You can send it for less than a penny in some cases over at uh, blockchain.info. But the wallet itself is free, and all the great tools at blockchain are also free, like the ability to... Well, I guess I should clarify. If you're going to send Bitcoins anonymously, there is a fee involved with that at blockchain.info. But if you want to search through the blockchain, if you want to learn about Bitcoin transactions and how you know where they're going, and there's so much info at blockchain.info. Blockchain.info is great for this. I mean, you can really... You can see the the uh, the biggest transactions that have happened. They have, they have different lists that they link to actually then it's hmm. really interesting to look at you know it's within a certain amount of time they give you like you know the the most recent transactions you can always see but you can see the largest ones it's just a lot of fun there's a bunch of other ones i don't recall what they are but it is a lot of fun to go look at and their bitcoin wallet 
It's free, and it's secure as well. The FBI, the NSA, even blockchain themselves do not have access to the money in your wallet because it is encrypted in your browser. So go and get your free Bitcoin wallet today at blockchain.info. Before we continue with your calls about the school shooter, I want to give you the update in the case. This was published February 27th this year. Uh, the uh, young man, David Kim, he's 21. He was charged after going on a campus, a college campus that he was a student at, uh, in a Halloween costume, wearing a sword. It's alleged to be, by the police, a real sword, and then by others that it was a fake sword. He also supposedly had a BB gun on him and a tactical knife, according to the police documents. He has pleaded not guilty in this case as of, again, the end of February, so about a month ago. This is the most recent update in this I could find, so obviously his trial date is scheduled out probably a few months he was charged with breach of peace for this incident. Now, I went and I looked to see, well, what is breach of peace in Connecticut? Breach of peace is a Class B misdemeanor. So if he was so dangerous and carrying weapons was such a violation, he wasn't even charged with having a weapon. There wasn't even any sort of weapons-related charge that they brought against him here. So apparently, maybe it's not illegal to have a samurai sword on a uh, college campus. Maybe it's just a violation of the school rules. No, it's rules. probably a firearm. Um, he didn't have a firearm with him. Right, he had a BB gun. Right, that's what I'm, I understand. He had a BB gun that looked like a firearm, and that's the reason for the call. Consider for a second, Ian, the samurai sword is really incidental in this situation. That it's somebody running across campus mm -hmm. with a handgun strapped to their leg that might be the problem. That might be All the I'm thing saying is he wasn't charged with any kind of weapons that's related offense. That's because he didn't have a firearm. So the other thing you might want to know about the breach of the peace ordinance or statutes here is it's really easy to get this charge. You can get a breach of the peace charge in Connecticut for being in a public place and using abusive or obscene language or even making an obscene gesture. <laughs> That's wow. what we're talking about here. The number one, uh, the, so that was number five of the list. And number one is engaging in fighting or in violent, tumultuous, or threatening behavior in a public place. Uh, they're going to have a hard time proving that he was engaging in threatening behavior. He wasn't brandishing the weapons. He was just running to class. Number two, assaults or strikes another. Three, threatens to commit any crime against another person or another person's property. Four, publicly exhibits, distributes, posts up, or advertises any offensive, indecent, or abusive matter concerning any person. Five, I already read to you about the obscene language. And then six, creates a public and hazardous or physically offensive condition by any act which such person is not licensed or privileged to do. So maybe that would be it. Like he wasn't privileged to be on campus with with a uh, katana and a uh, fake gun with these things. But either way, he's going for not guilty. He's not taking the plea deal at this point. So oh, I, I, they got to prove it a court of law. I've got no problem with that. He needs it needs to be proven. But I think that the punishment pro should probably be an on campus issue. Right. I mean, they want right. to charge him with all this money to pay for all the cops and the helicopter. I mean, you know, if they have some type of. Uh, rule that says if there's a ninja involved send out the helicopter you know <laughs> he probably didn't know that let's go to brian he's in alabama you're on free talk live uh good evening and hey. i tend to agree that the uh, gentleman should not be charged anything other than for what crimes he's committed because they did pretty much overreact uh yeah they deployed all they deployed all those forces now with people with cell phones and everything you've got something else which is called a red herring which what if that person was out there to distract, got all the forces offline, and somebody at another institution or everything did real damage? Sure. Oh, it's easy to throw the police off. Absolutely. And so if, so that's part of what the commander earns the dollars for. Is he supposed to be able to make these mental decisions, send X number of people at this point? And at this point, for damage control, he should get a lot of the college kids into the auditorium and he should apologize, number one, but then again, he should explain himself as to why he did what he did. I agree. He should be apologizing to these kids because, you know, well, they're not kids. These young adults, I mean, they were, you know, Correct. held I, at gunpoint. Yeah, it was yeah, terrible. They were held at gunpoint. Forced anything from their could have happened. If one of these uh, SWAT team members would have accidentally pulled a trigger, and it's happened. Oh, they, they ran into the room going, hands up! Hands, up. hands, 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 hands. They're, they're, they're doing yeah, that. Right, and, I mean, right, people right. could have died. Would would right. the guy with the gun be responsible then? And I don't think so. How many steps removed is he responsible for the comet that hits, uh, you know, Antarctica? I don't no. think so. No. Hey, Brian, but thanks. Did, Go ahead. 
I do believe that somebody that cries fire in a movie theater should it, it, it should pay a penance or a price. Just as it, but if I saw a kid doing that, or no, I'm sorry, a young adult, I've got a daughter daughter in college, doing that on a college campus, I would start looking for where the cake party is. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Brian. I appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Travis. He's in West Virginia listening to WVTS. Hey, Travis. Hey, what's going on, guys? How hey, you doing? Go ahead with your thoughts, sir. Hey, uh, the uh, so on, this, on the full shooter thing, or lack of, um, I don't know if it's been brought up yet, but I mean, these police officers is probably overdone. But they would have been they would have been hailed if it would have gone the other way. If the if the, if the young adult you know would have actually had a weapon. And just had discharged it oh no! Hold on, Travis. They are being hailed. Let me clarify something. They are oh, being they hailed are. by okay. the commenters on the news articles and the YouTube videos. The, the you know Reddit uh, discussion. People think the police were just great in this situation. Oh, look how nice they were to those kids. They were helping them out, and they just thought the people who were commenting on these this, these stories. A lot of them just thought the police were just great holding these kids at gunpoint. Yeah, I, I just wonder how the how your the conversation that you know you're, you've been having uh, you know past few minutes with everybody would have went if you would have actually had a uh, live firearm there. So well, I think I would be saying on, that I would. So, I think the conversation would be that boy, it's a shame that uh, firearms aren't allowed on campus because if firearms were allowed on campus, then the police response probably wouldn't have been necessary in the first place. There are colleges in this country that firearms are allowed on campus. I think that what, part of the problem here with the whole uh, kerfuffle is that this is a campus near Sandy Hook where it's illegal to have a firearm, and I think that there people are just sort of hyper vigilant. No, nah, Mark, this is. This would happen anywhere, and thanks, Travis, for the call tonight. It happened in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, when, it's not which is not to- anywhere near Sandy Hook. And the incident I'm going to tell you about happened, I believe, before Sandy Hook. Uh, the there was a man who walked out of the wood or walked into the woods in an apartment building. He had had an argument with his girlfriend. He had a gun. Uh, it's not illegal in New Hampshire to have a gun, and he was walking out of the parking, uh, walking out of the parking lot into the woods behind the building. This was in the vicinity of a high school, so people freaked out. The police came down on this just like they did in uh, this situation. They brought in sheriffs, they brought in cops, they brought in uh, state police from all across the state. They brought in the state police helicopter. The same old stuff. It's an excuse to spend a bunch of money. It's an excuse to use their toys bring out the bear cat bring out the helicopters that's what this that's what it's all about nobody really thought the school was in danger i don't believe that for a moment at least not in the keen case let's go to shauna in utah you're on free talk live hello shauna hi um well where i live it's in you know southern utah and so i actually had two comments i wanted to comment on your marriage thing too you've got time for one comment because you literally have the last 30 seconds right now if you want to call about marriage call tomorrow night Okay. Well, I just wanted to say here, here in Utah, um, our teachers are allowed to conceal carry. Almost everybody can conceal carry and you can open carry. Mm. So while the guy is a complete idiot, because here he probably would have been shot. Um, I don't think you should have to pay for anything because they way overreacted. Absolutely. We had a situation here where there was a... Do me a favor, call tomorrow night, we can talk more about marriage at that time. Call in the beginning of the show, though, that we can definitely get you on and give you enough enough time to actually get your thoughts out. Appreciate hearing from you tonight. And uh, Marcus, thanks for coming in as always. BrainlessTales.com, go and check out more of what Marcus does every single day, putting out fresh new comics for your entertainment. And we'll uh, talk to you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? 
Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand. And this is Jessica Armand. Here with your Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,326, silver at $20.29, and Bitcoin is trading at $592. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem, operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush, online at SovereignBTC.com. And from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy at 512-343-6494, or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216624. And from the Soleil School, enrolling children from 5 through 10 in Austin, visit soleilschool.com. And now the news. Security fixes that address the problems Mt. Gox blamed for the loss of bitcoins were put into place Wednesday. PC World reports that the software, known as Bitcoin QT, has been renamed as Bitcoin Core. The rebranding is intended to show that it runs the core infrastructure of the cryptocurrency's transaction and verification network. According to the release notes, the latest version of Bitcoin software contains more than a half dozen fixes for transaction malleability. A surprise appearance Tuesday at the 2014 TED conference in Vancouver, Canada. Brian Hagen has this story. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, by use of a remote-controlled satellite robot, appeared on stage to address the conference goers, outlining why he took the risk to make off with 1.7 million documents from the agency. I don't want to harm my government. I want to help my government. Snowden told the crowd that stopping terrorism is not the goal of the NSA's massive surveillance program. The bottom line is that terrorism has always been what we in the intelligence world would call a cover for action. Terrorism is something that provokes an emotional response that allows people to rationalize authorizing uh, powers and programs that they wouldn't give other bodies. Snowden concluded his talk by saying, We don't have to give up our privacy 